This is the story of a boy who from the moment he was born was despised by his parents. His name is Davin, and his misfortune was to be born on the same day, and at the same time as Cajun, a child blessed by the sword god Kashak. Born with a blessed body and talent, Davin's mother only wished her son was Cajun instead of him. She and his father were disappointed in Davin. One of the reasons being that he was missing his right arm. His mother would whisper to him every night that he should die. Davin was aware of this and apologized to her not knowing why he was despised. He did not want to die. When Davin was not yet born, he heard his father say that he was the hope. At that time, they were looking forward to Davin as his father could never beat his older brother. But he hoped that when Davin was born, the child would be better than his brother's son. Davin's father expected him to defeat Cajun, yet he was born with only one hand and without the blessing of a god, and the mere fact that he was born crushed all his father's hopes. While Cajun played with a smile and had begun to walk, Davin still struggled to get up. When Davin learned to take his first steps, Cajun was already holding a blade. The first time Davin held a blade, Cajun had already experienced mana and began to train Sammy in swordsmanship. At some point, Cajun became the object of Davin's adoration and envy. When he was seven years old, he was sent as one of Cajun's assistants. Outwardly, it was known that he was sent as an aide to support Cajun. But the reality is that his parents sold him for 300,000 Liden. As they grew up, Cajun took advantage of him, because from the beginning, Davin was an annoyance to him. That's why Cajun took his anger out on Davin, who had no choice but to hold back his tears. It was hard for him to bear the fact that the adults who passed before him turned a blind eye to the situation. Davin's uncle was known as an amazing man, but he left the family a long time ago and never came back. That's why there was no one to control Cajun, so he grew up as a boss. He easily beat everyone. He had superior talent in the blessing of the sword god. Next, he would face Davin, who was jealous of Cajun's strength and talent. Cajun despised the look on Davin's face and went all out against him, as he couldn't bear to be seen that way by someone with no arm. Cajun tells Davin that he can work hard all his life if he wants to, but he will never be able to achieve his strength. Davin wants to win, he really wants to, but his dreams can't be achieved by hard work alone. Cajun got lazy with his training as he grew up, sinking into alcohol, girls and drugs, and still Davin was not able to beat him. Cajun was a genius who didn't work and Davin was an idiot who worked hard, but he is clear about one thing. Their positions will not be the same forever. After many fights, the most significant one came for Davin. After exchanging a few blows, for the first time he got the upper hand against Cajun. After blinding him, he quickly approached him to deliver a direct blow, with which he finally managed to defeat Cajun. Up to that point, the head-to-head -head record was 21 fights and 21 losses to Cajun, but after 29 years, Davin was able to beat him, despite all the times he lost and people telling him to give up, mocking him for being a talentless idiot. But still, he won and everyone shouted his name. Cajun couldn't bear to lose to Davin. At that moment, Davin heard the words that fell on his ears when he was younger. The words of contempt that his parents said to him. Davin tells Cajun that if it were him, he wouldn't have lived that way. He wouldn't have wasted his life on alcohol and drugs. He makes it clear that he would have lived a more meaningful life than stepping on the weak. By the time Davin turns to leave thinking it's all over, Cajun runs his sword through his chest. Leaving everyone stunned, Cajun, an idiot to the end. Despite defeating Cajun, there was no way. Davin would live. The Sunblade Greatsword that only the direct line of the Samian family uses. Also contains Samian family mana with anti-magic properties, meaning that unless the miraculous. Saint Layla appeared, there was no way Davin would survive. Before closing his eyes, Davin tells Cajun that he will always be remembered as a loser. Surprisingly, Davin later wakes up tied up, believing he is in hell. But this masked guy tells him that he is a lucky guy, as the miraculous. Saint Layla was present in the arena and healed Davin. Despite that, his whole body was broken and all he could do was breathe. Next, this guy asks Davin if he signed a contract with the devil. Davin is surprised to hear such a statement, but the guy mentions that his parents admitted it, so it is useless to deny it. Besides that bottles with Davin's blood for the contract with the devil were found in his family's house. They accuse him of being a demon who sacrificed 300 innocent children to make himself stronger. Davin managed to defeat Cajun, but not the Samian family. After all, his own family chose Cajun over him. Because of all these accusations, Davin is sentenced to life. Imprisonment and having his mana sealed. Davin's sinews were cut and his mana was sealed through many chains, and so he was taken to prison, where he receives a visit from Cajun, who laughs at him. Cajun managed to become a sword emperor and people praise him for being a hard-working genius. This idiot thanks Davin for everything, as it was thanks to him that he achieved all that. 
After Cajun humiliated him and left, the food they brought Davin decreased a lot. To the point where they stopped feeding him. Davin was starving. He thinks it would have been. Better to die in the arena than to die this way. Davin collapses and wonders if he had both arms. His life would have been different. If only he had been of direct lineage. If only he had had the blessing of the sword god. If only he had had that, would his life have been different? Davin refuses to die, and although it seems that is what will happen, he does not believe he is dead after. All. Davin opens his eyes again in confusion. He is called by the name Vincent and a kind of familiar person is holding his right arm. It is an adult from one of the family branches. He wonders how. He knows him, but more importantly, why did he just call him Vincent? Is it a dream? Vincent is the seventh son of Atenka. He thinks he is in a dream, and it doesn't seem so bad. The air feels fresh unlike the prison he was in. Plus he has his right arm. The person in front of him keeps holding his arm and tries to inflict pain using mana. There he reacts. The method to block that kind of attack is to physically separate from the opponent. Davin pushes the guy back, although he is surprised, as it is not a strong enough attack to push someone back that far. Then apologizes and tells him that his hand slipped. The guy gets up angrily and tells Davin that his son will crush him mercilessly, and that it will be the first time the filial family will crush the main family. The guy leaves while threatening him and tells him to wait for the day of the assembly of the real swords. But isn't this a dream? If so, he should have woken up by now, then some memories start flowing back to him. His mother passed away after giving birth. While his father did not care about him at all, all the other children treated him like dirt. Of the eight children of the famous Atenka sword family. He is Vincent, the seventh. He was such a coward that he cowered and cried in his room after being slapped by Loa, the youngest of the family. It's time to accept it. The Davin. We knew from the Samian family has become the useless Vincent from the Atenka family. Yes. Reincarnated. The now Vincent doesn't understand how this happened. Next, he comes across a diary. That Vincent used to despise himself. His self-esteem fell so low that he gave up on everything. Everything indicated that God had heard the prayers. Davin wanted to live in his last moments. He then wonders what happened to the original Vincent. Moments later, he hears a voice. This alerts. Him. He thinks it is a demon trying to trick him because his reincarnation should never have happened. But no, the one speaking to him was the original owner of the body he is in. Since the original. Vincent gave him his body, he no longer has a name. So now he decides to call himself Julian. Vincent is facing a revelation. Something the gods give to humans. He had heard that people. Blessed from birth can hear the revelation. Which means that Julian is a god, a lesser one. Julian mentions that originally, he had intended to call a spiritual god, but the now Vincent. Crawled instead. If Julian wants to become a true god and not a lesser one, he must achieve. Numerous accomplishments. This goes by the name of calling. If Julian completes his calling. He will be able to become a true god. Vincent tells him that he understands the circumstances. But makes it clear that he is not interested in his achievements. Because if everything is as. Julian has said, that means that Vincent has earned himself a new life, which he will be busy living. So he will not have time to listen to the wishes of a ghost. Julian gave up his life in Davin. Wished for one. However, he mentions that the spiritual energy he has is very low. And if that. Energy disappears completely, Vincent's body will die. Vincent thinks it is a lie, as he notices that. The body is too healthy for an early death. But soon after he collapses to the ground. From that moment on, Julian will show him the real memories, the ones where Vincent was treated. Like dirt, however. He notices something in the expression he had, which is why he comes to the conclusion that while Vincent was playing the coward, he was preparing to take revenge. Thoughts not at all suitable for a 13-year-old boy. Vincent wakes up and Julian asks him if you will listen to him now. Next, Julian asks Vincent if he knows the archdemon Davin and the hero king. Kajan, which surprises Vincent greatly. This is something that happened 500 years ago. A one-armed swordsman, Davin, escaped from Samian prison and using a contract with a demon. Devoured thousands of lives to become stronger. He is said to have killed over 10,000 people, so he is recorded in history as a great demon, but 500 years ago. Does that mean he traveled 500 years into the future? Things don't seem to make sense, but besides having the names Davin and Kajan, they are both from the bloodline of the Samian family. However, Vincent is sure that in his past life he died in that prison. The Samian family abandoned the one-armed man and chose the storm sword, while the one-armed swordsman died alone. The storm sword became the sword emperor, or so it is assumed. 
but to fabricate the story and refer to them as the great demon king and the hero, that is. Something that makes Vincent very angry. Julian jokes and tells him that Kajan was a friend who really loves Davin, which makes Vincent angrier, as he knows this is a made-up story. Julian asks Vincent if in the past life he was someone from that time. He then clarifies that the story is just a combination of stories that the victors left behind. Julian continues talking, he mentions that the king swallowed his tears and worked with the greatest hero of the time. His best friend? The Emperor of the Sun Sword, to defeat the great demon Davin. The Emperor of the Sun is Arslan. Ancestor of the Ardenka family. Vincent is surprised that this brat has become the first patriarch of the Ardenka family, and is that Arslan was a boy who admired Davin a lot. This. Because when Arslan was young, he was a disciple of Davin. Arslan even visited him a few times. While he was imprisoned, he was upset about what had been done to Davin and told him that he would make sure he got his honor back. But after he said that, he did not visit him again. Julian mentions that Arslan is the first patriarch of the Ardenka family and left them the mission of their lives. It is something to do with Julian's achievement. Overcoming the Samian family and facing the truth. Vincent thinks Arslan definitely told him that he would find out the truth. He was someone who knew how they had wronged Davin. Vincent is not sure, but Arslan Falker left the family and created the Ardenka family to face the truth. Ardenka is a new family that was created to restore Davin's honor. Vincent supposes that it is destiny to be born into Arslan's family. Vincent asks Julian if by fulfilling his calling, he will become a true god, and the answer is yes. And if that happens, Davin will be able to become the true owner of Vincent's body. And if Julian becomes a god, he will be able to bestow a blessing on Vincent. It's a deal that benefits them both. Vincent thanks Arslan, takes a sword and says he will inherit the mission he left behind. He will surpass the Samian family, the family that betrayed him. Julian jokes with Vincent and calls him old, because if he is someone from 500 years ago then he is an old man. Isn't he? After walking for a while, they arrive at a training match. Vincent wonders what kind of martial arts the people of that time will use. He is interested to know how much martial arts have improved over 500 years. He also wonders how strong the descendants of Kajan have become. However, his body feels heavy to the point where he faints. The body he has now is not very good. It is in such a bad state that if he does not use mana to control it, he will not be able to live a normal life. After meditating for a while, he senses a flow of mana and calls out to Julian. Then complains to him why he didn't learn to wield the sword when he used to have that body. Julian replies that he had a disability that did not allow him to learn it. However, Vincent tells him that he has the heavenly exoskeleton, so he should have learned to use the sword. Julian doesn't even know about exohat. Vincent mentions that with the heavenly exoskeleton, he is able to store mana in any part of his body. More exactly. In his bones, Julian still doesn't understand. Vincent tries to explain it to him in a more understandable way. A martial artist needs to use mana to possess strength beyond a normal human. The mana that causes miracles is stored in the heart of a human, but having the heavenly exoskeleton means that mana can be stored in the bones above the heart. That means that the one who possesses it will be able to use mana infinitely. Julian still doesn't understand the importance of what Vincent is talking about, and that is that. Cajun, whom everyone calls the hero king also possessed the heavenly exoskeleton. It's ironic, isn't it? Davin was reincarnated in a body with the physiognomy of Cajun, whom he envied all his life. But the world 500 years later is a stranger place than he had anticipated. In a flashback, Julian tells him that he cannot link the imagery to the heart. Vincent does not know what he means by imagery. This is imagery storage for mana. Seeing that he did not store mana in his heart, Vincent wonders about the method of meditation. Although Julian does not know exactly what kind of meditation method he is talking about. Vincent mentions that Falker, the first Atenka, had a great meditation method to store mana in the heart. In Julian's time, they store the mana in the imagery and call each one a star. The number of stars used represents the strength of the martial artist. Long ago they eliminated the method of storing mana in the physical body. There are not even records of them. Yes, nowadays they use SD cards to store mana. In conclusion, this means that an adult of the family creates at least one imagery. Linking an imagery for the first time and feeling the mana are the requirements of a star. Imagery was created to avoid the risks of storing mana in the heart in the past. More than half of the martial artists died storing mana in their hearts because they exploded. However, Vincent starts storing mana in his heart, this because he is a strong heart. He has to risk everything if he wants to be recognized as a proper martial artist. One-armed Davin learned this method and grew up that way. Julian interrupts Vincent because he 
notices that mana is flowing everywhere, then mentions the circuit formula. There is a formula. For using mana efficiently, though in Davin's time they did it by mere touch, though not all of them. Succeeded, more than half died. Julian asks him to take it easy and use his body properly. As if it were precious, and indeed it is. Which is why Vincent asks Julian why he did that too. His own body. That body was born with heavenly exoskeleton, and with a strong heart and magic. Power circuit. Julian would certainly have succeeded if he had grown up with proper training in the Samian family. The heavenly exoskeleton is a bone structure that allows him to store mana. But it also needs mana to be stored, and his heavenly exoskeleton has been starving for mana. For over 13 years. At that rate, Vincent adding his body will die without having reached adulthood. Later, Vincent meditates. He knows it will prevent the body's condition from getting worse. But there is a limit. He may only have about 10 years left, and that is more than enough time. For Storm Sword to become Emperor of the Sword and for Davin with one arm to be forgotten by the world. It is the time Davin spent starving while imprisoned as he longed for life. Those ten years were no doubt terrifying and absurdly long. Next, someone knocks on the door and then enters. It is Vincent's servant. His name is Wilson, the same one that Julian said he would slit his. Throw three years later, don't think too hard. That boy had some very twisted thoughts. Vincent asks Wilson to bring him some clean clothes. Wilson is surprised, as he notices that Vincent seems to be stronger than usual, then asks him what he has been doing to make the room such a mess. Wilson thinks Vincent has been learning dark magic or something, so he wants to alert the Grand Chamberlain and inform the Patriarch. Vincent slowly approaches and threateningly tells Wilson to do his job. As that is what he is supposed to do, he is supposed to be the servant, but he doesn't want to do things he doesn't feel like doing. But Vincent makes it clear that he is a servant. Since it looks like he won't do anything, Vincent decides to go to the big Chamberlain that Wilson talked about to ask for clean clothes. As well as telling him that he had to go himself because his servant, Wilson doesn't want to work. This makes Wilson suddenly want to do his job, and he'll do the cleaning too. As cowardly and sensitive as Vincent is, a servant cannot be so insolent and arrogant. They must have put him in that position on purpose. Julian thinks the same. They probably want Vincent to solve the issue of a defiant and rude servant to show how the seventh young lord of Atenka should be. Julian mentions that Wilson used to be a gang member and that he also killed a lot of people. Vincent does not believe this to be true, as a person who has killed many has a certain energy, and he does not feel anything at all coming from Wilson, as he has two innocent eyes. Moreover, he feels that he is also a coward. Julian asks him how he is sure of what he said. Vincent is sure of all this because he has lived such a life. Julian is frightened, as he believes he summons something more terrifying than a spirit king. Because let's remember that Julian doesn't know that the identity of who is Invention's body is Davin himself. Wilson finished doing the laundry and cleaning Vincent's room. Wilson notices that. Vincent is more submissive. Vincent asks him for a one-meter wooden sword, weighing about 500 grams. And it must be made of black smelling wood. There are supposed to be tons like this in the family. Warehouse. Wilson refuses. If this is the case, Vincent would have to go on his own, of course. And tell the warehouse keeper that he is there in person because Wilson refused to follow orders. Which is a problem. Wilson did not know this, but warehouse keepers are exceptional martial artists. And very loyal to the direct descendants of the family. Wilson asks him why he is acting like that again and when he tries to touch him. Vincent responds by knocking him down, as he has bad memories of being attacked from behind. Despite having done that, Vincent's body was writhing in pain. Wilson gets up. It looks like he had something to say, but he finally agrees to follow Vincent's orders, although he clearly didn't want to at first. Wilson is upset and doesn't want to lose to Vincent ever again. Wilson brings the sword to Vincent in a bad way. Vincent comments that he knows while a person who has no right arm and who has led a hard life until he met a terrible end. This makes Wilson's attitude change again and he hands over the weapon properly. Even though it is embarrassing for him, Vincent needs proper training, so he begins to undertake it. He knows that the heavenly exoskeleton he has is extremely weak, but he did not expect to be so tired after wielding the wooden sword a few times. However, it is a good feeling. Everything indicated that this body was born to be a martial artist. Moments later, a guy appears and cuts the test dummy in half. His name is Ravana Dinka and Vincent is definitely not someone he likes. Julian explains that Ravana Dinka is a very collateral descendant. He is also one of the candidates who is predicted to win the true swords assembly. The guy from before was this guy's father. Julian warns him to be careful as he is a rising star, the most skilled among the 13-year-olds in the Adenka family. 
As for Ravana, he figured that if he won in the True Sword Assembly, he would have to fight. Vinson, which is why he came to find him. The True Sword Assembly is a competition that brings together numerous sons of martial families that are related to the Adenka family to fight with. True Swords. Although there is no age restriction, people usually participate in this event from the age of 14. The winner of the True Sword Assembly has the opportunity to fight against the direct descendant of the Adenka family who is the same age. That direct descendant who will fight against the winner of the competition will be Vincent, who in theory is considered the weakest of the direct descendants. Ravana thinks Vincent is afraid, but on the contrary, in fact, he tells him that even provocations should have a certain level of dignity and class. He is annoyed that Ravana went there to mock him. The Davin without an arm was respected both in the training camp and in the combat arena. Even Kajint respected him. Vincent tells Ravana that it was his father who taught him such manners. This makes Ravana angry, so he decides not to forgive him now that Vincent disrespected his father. Julian warns him that Ravana is at two-star level and possesses the attributes of a man of steel. He must be careful as Ravana in theory is stronger than Vincent. This. He knows. If they fight now he will lose, but he can't stand that feeling of inferiority that Ravana was raised with as a collateral descendant. Ravana is using mana even though he knows Vincent. Can't do it. This boy's father doesn't act like an adult and his son doesn't know the etiquette of being a martial artist. Vincent has to set him straight. He tells him that in his time, someone like Ravana would have taken a beating from the elders of a family. They both pointed their swords at each other. Ravana knows that Vincent has no mana. However, the atmosphere he was in implied that Vincent could cut him down any time he wanted to. Vincent stops things there and warns Ravana that in the assembly of the true swords, things won't end with just wooden swords. That makes Ravana burst out in anger and try to attack him. Ravana is about to attack him and Vincent doesn't even seem to have any intention of dodging. This because he knows Ravana can't hurt him and so it is a guy arrives to stop Ravana. If he had hurt Vincent, it would have been a problem. Ravana tells Vincent that they will meet at the assembly of the true swords. Julian asks Vincent why he provoked Ravana earlier. He replies that all he did was teach a disrespectful child a lesson. Vincent is trying to learn all about that era through Julian. He was looking at some portraits. Julian tells him that now that they are done with the image theory, the blessings and traits follow. The traits are artificially made from the analyzed power of the blessings. A man made blessing. Vincent asks Julian if he is able to make blessings, as this is disrespectful to the gods. Julian replies that no one has died yet from divine punishment. Vincent mentions that Ravana also has a trait, man of steel. Julian explains that the dwarf king's blessings include many things, but this trait focuses on strengthening the body. The more you grind a specific trait, the stronger path it opens up. That's called a family tree. Man of steel is a mid-level trait. Defense and destructive power is the specialty of this trait. If this were the case, the martial teachings would lean to one side. But Julian mentions that. This makes them strong quickly. And it is just as Julian says since the dummy cut by Ravana earlier. Is an achievement incomparable to someone from Davin's time. To compete with people like that. Vincent needs to get used to those skills. Vincent continues training. The people there notice. That he is using only his left hand. So they think that Vincent won't be able to use imagery that way. Plus he starts panting after a few hits, however, this guy, vice leader Merlin. Tells them not to speak so rashly about Vincent. Although Merlin wants to defend Vincent. Looking at him. It is normal that people feel free to call him the shame of Atenka. As he is a guy who wields the sword aimlessly. Without any mana or trait, destined to be despised. By people. Since everyone was whispering as they watched Vincent, Julian proposes to go train in a. Forest. But Vincent is used to being looked down upon in the first place, remembering that no one. Expected Davin to single-handedly beat Cashin. But he did and exchanged the booze for praise. Next, Merlin gives Vincent an advanced recovery potion. Which will make training easier. Merlin introduces himself to him. Vincent is surprised that he isn't laughing. Although to be honest. He did it first. But Merlin noticed that Vincent's eyes seem to be desperately searching for something. Vincent tells Merlin that he will remember his name. Hours pass and Vincent continues to train, both physically and theoretically. Balancing on his right leg, turning his hip, feeling the mana in his heart. He has begun to see it. Remembered the way to defeat Cashin. A path of swords made and stacked with dots and lines to manifest skills. Next, he hits the practice dummy and manages to cut it in two. It worked. His sword strike is complete. Later, Wilson is annoyed that Vincent's training only gives him more work to do. He then serves Vincent breakfast. 
Vincent immediately realizes that Wilson blatantly stole some of the food. He didn't even wipe his mouth. Vincent can let it go this time. But is clear with him, he doesn't want him to cross the line. Next, Wilson starts to threaten him by telling him that he used to be a gangster who killed a lot of people. Evidently, this doesn't provoke fear in Vincent. Who through telepathy tells Wilson that controlling through fear is easy but useless? That's why he doesn't push him with power. Wilson is surprised, as he didn't expect Vincent to be able to use mana. Vincent tells Wilson to stop acting proud in front of him and stand by his side. As soon, he will not be ashamed to be Vincent adding his property. Vincent gives him two choices. Be ruled by fear or show loyalty. Wilson leaves and denies that any loyalty is formed towards him. Although his face after leaving said the opposite. Merlin wanders around the training ground and notices that Vincent finished training earlier in the day. But that's not the only thing. Because he also notices that Vincent managed to cut a dummy. He thinks he did it with a real blade. But from what he saw, Vincent only used wooden swords. It takes a lot of skill to pull off a cut like that. Merlin wonders what kind of martial arts Vincent is learning. The idiot Wilson has become very polite. Next, Vincent mentions something about the clothes, which are made of levodyne cotton, which is very profitable but ruins the floor. It's not something good enough to be worn by a nobleman. Besides that, the food. The quality is low compared to the family budget. This means there is someone stealing money. They might suspect Wilson, but he has no idea what they are talking about. It's definitely not him. It must be someone higher up. Raven is training. While remembering how intimidating Vincent looked with a mere wooden sword. But he doesn't seem afraid at all. In fact, it makes him angry. His father goes to see him. Tells him that there is not much time for the assembly of the true swords. Makes it clear that if they want to escape from that life of poverty and the pain of the branch families, Raven must defeat Vincent. Raven must become the only member of the branch family to overthrow the main family. Raven's father seems to be getting more and more irritable as the assembly approaches. He is becoming more and more obsessed. Raven wants to defeat Vincent. Because that way, both his father and his family can go back to the way they were before. We return to Julian, who has found out information about the people who participate in the True Swords competition. Not just personal information, but the techniques they use in their habits. Which is incredibly frightening. But Julian takes it as a compliment. Julian's plan was to make an eye-catching debut at the True Swords assembly by borrowing the strength of the Spirit King. And also the Miracle Stone. The mana crystal given to the champion. If ingested, the body and mana are instantly strengthened. From the information he has gathered. And the expression he shows, Vincent knows that Julian wants to win. It would be a disgrace as a martial artist if he loses even if he has all those tools at his disposal. Vincent tells him that. Although he may not be the spiritual king he was hoping for. He will see to it that he gives him a much more valuable victory. Next, Vincent calls Wilson as he needs him to do something for him. He needs Wilson to go see the great Chamberlain, just being in front of her intimidates him. Wilson tells Ralsa that Vincent had something to tell the head of the family. He asked that the head of the family observe the assembly of the true swords directly. As Vincent said he would prove his worth as a member of the main Anika family. Ralsa mentions that the head of the family has never observed that competition and has no time or reason to do so. Then Wilson mentions that this is the cost of embezzling the budget. Surprising Ralsa. After Wilson leaves, she thinks that Vincent could have come for himself. It would have been more effective to threaten him himself. But he sent Wilson to show authority. Has Vincent understood Ralsa's intentions? Ralsa goes to the head of the family. Patriarch Khan to tell him that Vincent has invited her to the assembly of the True Swords. The attitude of the head of the family is rather cold. And although Vincent has said he would show his worth, he does not believe he is skilled enough to speak of the value of the lineage he carries. Ralsa asks him to please attend the event. Even telling him that if Vincent cannot prove his worth, she will give her head in exchange. The chief doesn't understand why she is doing all this. Ralsa says it is because Vincent has taken advantage of a weakness of hers. The chief already knew about the budget embezzlement. Though he acknowledges that it must be something she did on purpose for Vincent Sake, as she intended to use that money for his future. Khan says he has no reason to interfere. Since strictly speaking, Ralsa is that woman's servant. Not his, yet he recognizes that this kind of method is really like her. Expressing all his intentions towards him without losing a bit of dignity, is he really Sarbana's son? Anyway, Ralsa wins. 
the chief will attend the assembly of the true swords. The day of the real swords assembly has finally arrived. The competitors enter the arena. Ralsa is determined to defeat Vincent. Noticing Khan's presence, Ralsa is surprised. He is sure that he is there to see his performance. For after all, Ralsa is the rising star. He does not want to miss the opportunity to defeat Vincent in front of the patriarch. The assembly of the true swords begins. Ralsa has his first confrontation, which he manages to win easily, making his father stand up proud. No wonder they call Ralsa the rising star. After all, he is young and already has two stars. Plus, the defense attribute he possesses is impressive. It was very likely that a collateral descendant would win the competition for the first time. Vincent was watching. Based on the standards of 500 years ago, everyone there is a genius. But they have no depth in martial arts. The strength they have comes mainly from individual traits. Vincent sees no fighting experience in those moves. It's like they are dancing puppets. That's probably why Raven is able to use traits and attack so recklessly. Raven thinks Vincent will run away, but Vincent won't run anywhere. The fights continued. Raven kept climbing until he finally beat all the competitors he had. That's when he shows himself in front of Khan and just as the laws set their dictate. He wants to fight Vincent as the last fight of the assembly of the true swords. Vincent doesn't. Think twice and accepts the challenge. Both go to the fighting arena, the referee, Zirin. Belonging. To the white sword unit will be in charge of starting. But Vincent interrupts, as he has a condition. He will use the wooden sword and his left hand to fight. Moreover, he will let Raven have three. Attacks first. Until these three attacks are completed, Vincent will not move a single step. Raven asks him what the hell he is doing. He thinks he is making fun of him even now. The audience thought this was absurd and that Vincent knows nothing about martial arts. Raven's father steps in to say that Vincent is only doing this to make excuses when he loses. But Khan will allow Vincent's conditions. However, he makes it clear to him that he better prove. Words with actions. The fight is about to start, they both prepare, and it finally begins. Raven wastes no time and attacks immediately. The first attack is likely to be a short stab. Most of the attacks are feints, the real attack would be the second stab. Vincent thinks Raven's moves are so obvious that he can see them even without Julian's information. First of all, big swords are not made for stabbing, so he deflects the attack with one hand. Raven is surprised, because for something like that to happen, Vincent has to be much stronger than him. Vincent let him have two attacks first. He has only one attack left. But Raven gets angry. At the arrogance Vincent is showing and tries to attack with everything. But it doesn't work. Vincent manages to grab him by one arm and knock him down. The three attacks are complete. It's now or never, Vincent prepares to fulfill the promise he made to Julian and father. Now it's his turn to attack. Everyone was surprised that Raven had knelt before Vincent. His father, angry, asks him why he's having so much trouble against someone who can't use mana. Raven doesn't know what's going on. Much less Julian, who hasn't seen it clearly. Vincent replies that it's a basic unarmed fight, standing there dumbfounded because you don't have. A blade is not the way of a true martial artist. Meaning there are many ways to suppress an opponent. Without weapons. Raven mentions that he understands now, Vincent has obtained a trait. One given by a small minor god. This is no problem for Vincent. If it makes things easier for him, let him keep thinking like that. Raven prepares to attack again. Vincent manages to dodge him and prepares to counterattack by punching him in the neck. However, this does not hurt Raven as a practice sword will never be able to break through the defenses of a man of steel. A broken heavenly exoskeleton and an untrained body, Vincent won't be able to use great strength yet. But if Raven gains confidence, he will attack again with the same method, so Vincent, using the power of him punching downwards, hits him in the stomach, then tells referee Zuron to do his best to prevent a tragedy. Vincent only has one chance. If he uses that ability just once, his body will collapse. He must finish that fight while Raven is still in the air. Raven tries to defend himself. But Vincent can see through the attacks the mysterious path of swords that will connect the two points. He tells Julian to look carefully, this is the sword he mastered. Vincent manages to hit him. Drawing the attention of even the Patriarch Khan. Vincent slashes into space and twists the flow of mana, using the sword to cut through everything, including the enemy's ability. That is the absolute sword. Raven complains of pain in his arm, as Vincent's blow tore it off. Vincent tells Zuron to stop the fight at once, as there is a winner, Vincent Atenka. Raven's father enters the battlefield to help tend to his son's wounds. They must call the priest. Vincent had warned the referee. He told him to stop before a tragedy occurred. Despite 
Keeping his composure, Vincent's body is on edge, but this is no time to collapse. Vincent turns to Khan and tells him that he kept the promise. After that, Khan gives as the winner of the True Swords. Assembly to Vincent. After that, they prepare for the awarding. Vincent will be given a miracle. Stone as a reward. Raven's father bursts in completely angry, as he believes that Vincent used dirty tricks and borrowed the power of an apostle. The priest tells Khan that there is a problem. Raven's arm will not be attached to his body again. Raven's father refused to accept that. His son would live with only one arm, even blaming the priest for not being able to heal him. But it's a type of injury they've never seen before. It is not only something they have not seen before, but it seems that Raven was cut by something that the priest's divine powers cannot handle. They must hurry, otherwise even a high priest will not be able to fix the situation. Raven's father enhances the theory that Vincent used dirty tricks. Vincent asks Khan if he can respond to the accusations. Who gives him permission? Vincent mentions that the assembly of the true swords was held in the presence of the patriarch Khan. Therefore, all proceedings are considered to be approved with the authority of the patriarch. And the patriarch has authorized Vincent as the final winner. Therefore, the words of Raven's father, Charles, directly negate the authority of the Patriarch. Vincent orders Zuron, belonging to the White Sword Unit to arrest Charles. Because he mocked the Patriarch's authority in public. Zuron arrests Charles, then the Patriarch intervenes to tell Charles that he is indebted to Vincent. For if he had not been there, Charles would have had to face the family sanctions. Khan will let the situation pass. But asks him not to open his mouth again. Julian seems to look happy, as it is a valuable experience to be praised by the patriarch. But back to Raven, at this rate, the right arm will be lost forever. And Julian whispers something to Vincent, making it clear that it would definitely be a chance in his favor. Vincent asks the priest if he can't fix the arm with the miracle stone. After all, it was Vincent who cut off Raven's right arm. It would be nice if he could put an end to it. Patriarch Khan agrees. Raven approaches Charles and frees him using a sword, however. In helping him, it will be an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. For Raven's right arm. Will need someone else's right arm. Vincent thinks about Charles being a loser, as he refuses to say. Anything despite the situation. Is a right arm that important to him? I guess it is. Charles agrees. To sacrifice his right arm, apparently, even though he was acting like an idiot. He loved his son. As Charles was about to cut off his arm, Zyron intervenes on Vincent's orders to stop Charles. From removing his arm. Vincent tells Charles that he hopes that next time he will use all that courage for a better cause. That said, it is resolved. Khan gives the miracle stone to Vincent, who immediately gives it to the priest, who begins to use it in the hope of recovering Raven's arm. Miraculously. Seconds later, Raven gets his arm back. The healing of Raven was Julian's idea. Although it's a pity, because that stone could have been used to quench the thirst of the heavenly. Exoskeleton. While this was going on, Wilson was listening to everything behind the door thinking how great Vincent was. Then he remembers what he had told him earlier. And finally decides to be loyal to Vincent. Wilson now decides to give complete loyalty to Vincent. Next, the priest goes to see Vincent. His name is Delin, a priest who worships Gaia. He is there. To express gratitude to him for the matter before, and surprisingly, he gives him back the miracle. Stone. Delin gives it to him because making those who suffer first rise up and laugh until they are. Happy is the reason why he became a priest. Moreover, seeing how Vincent acted, he compared the value of the miracle stone to a human life. And as Vincent willingly gave up the miracle stone, it made Dowlin reflect. Vincent tells him that he did nothing. Dowlin simply realized it himself. However, accepting back the stone would be the proper way to respect Dowlin. In addition to the miracle stone, Dowlin gives Vincent a card in case he ever needs the temple's help. Dowlin has become a second class priest, although that is not yet public knowledge. Julian is surprised. Since being a second-class priest means having unlimited treatment. Free use of the staff. Plus the card from before is the same as telling them to treat me like a second-class priest. Although Vincent doesn't even know what second-class means, Dowlin says goodbye. Julian is. Happy because now they have something much better than Wilson. Julian is a little weak to praise. And speaking of praise, father usually eats alone. But there was a time when he invited one of the. Atenka family members to dine with him after the assembly of the true swords. That person was the. Second daughter, Daya. She had an overwhelming victory in the assembly of the true swords. The point is that there is a 50% chance that the same thing will happen with Vincent that night. Although his body feels stiff, then he starts to prepare himself even though it was not so sure that he would be invited to the dinner. Moments later, Wilson enters to tell Vincent that boss.
Khan has invited him to dinner just what Vinson expected. On the way to dinner, Vinson meets his stepmother, who congratulates him on winning the competition. Vinson's real mother passed away. After giving birth to him, the stepmother's name is Versa Hylam. Before her retirement, she was such a fierce martial artist that she was called a giant. Nowadays, she is in charge of everything related to the Atanka house. They both continue on to where Khan is waiting for them. The pressure Khan is exerting is so incredible that Vinson finds it hard to breathe. The atmosphere hasn't felt like this before. It means that the fact that he was invited must be a test for him. Vincent tells him that he doesn't think there is any need to purposely put pressure on him in a private meeting. This because Khan was supposed to be expecting him as a father, not as the head of the family. Khan acknowledges that Vincent was right to notice. He has called him for two reasons. The first is to congratulate him on today's victory, and the second is to see how valid Charles' concerns were. Next, Versa looks rather intimidatingly at Vincent. This to inspect him, Khan asks her if there is a chance that Vincent is an apostle. But she replies that he doesn't seem to be. Vincent feels a horrible sensation. It must be Versa's speciality. She possesses eyes that can see through the truth. Khan asks Versa what kind of martial art Vincent uses since he has not yet been able to link an image to the heart. How could he cut off Riven's arm? Who is a two star martial artist? Versa answers that Vincent's ability is similar to the sword of the hero king. Yes. To Kajin Samian. He wielded his sword in strange ways and was said to devour any evil ability. It was also said that his sword was able to subdue the demon Davin. Again, a fabricated story leaves. Davin is the loser when he was not. Versa approaches Vinson and asks him to speak. How did he learn that swordplay that resembles Kajan's? Vinson thought it was Khan who called him. But that conversation is being handled by Versa. He is being questioned about the origins of his. Martial arts. Julian desperately asks Vinson not to answer Versa's question. As she is able to tell. Truth from lies with her eyes, if Vincent says sloppy excuses, she will definitely get suspicious. But then what should he do? Tell her that he is not her son but actually someone from 500 years. Julian says he will take care of it. Although the truth is that he is afraid of being caught. Acting useless. But Vincent calms him down and tells him that it is just one step. Just one step. To overcome his fears. Vincent will take the first step for him. He tells Versa that he has received. A revelation. This alerts Versa as he received a revelation without any blessing. In most situations, you cannot receive revelations without blessings unless they are bad. Julian had not told Vincent this. Seeing that he was acting suspiciously, Versa threatens to take him to the trial of the holy court. Julian asks Vincent to say the same as him. He says that if he finds him suspicious, then he can check with the temple. However, if he is evil, couldn't a priest who has a rank 3 miracle stone recognize him? That miracle stone had been given to Dolan by Versa. It is the one. Vincent received as a gift earlier. Using his eyes, he realizes that Vincent is not lying. He then asks. Him if he really learned sword play through a revelation. He replies that he learned a lot. Through revelations. However, sword play he did not learn there. He mentions that he has always. Been able to read the mysterious movements of the sword. However, he had contemplated for a few. Days whether he should learn that but he wanted to change. Even though it might incur suspicion. From numerous people, he thought it would be cowardly not to do anything. Julian's truth. And Vincent's truth, their two truths can face each other in Versa's eyes. Together they say that. Only then can they overcome the Samian family and fulfill the long mission of the Atenka family. He wanted to show how he has become stronger to the many family members. Khan included because he thought he would be able to make the right judgment. Khan rubs his chin. Versa quickly realizes that he does that when he is satisfied with something. Khan's decision is for Vincent to continue training martial arts. Versa tells Khan that she is sure. He knows that Kajan's skill is similar to that of the demon King Davin. If Vincent uses the hero. King's sword, the Samian family will make a fuss and say that they have stolen it. But they would not have to say anything if the great demon King's sword is used instead. Since Khan has given his approval, he will be responsible for everything, so Vincent must do his. Best to improve himself and not cause trouble. Vincent knows that this is not a simple warning. She is confirming the patriarch's decision and also giving him her approval. Khan tells Vincent that she has shown great results in the assembly of the true swords. That is why Khan will grant her something she desires. Vincent wants to be stronger. Julian whispers to Vincent to ask Khan to let him go to the family library. Only three star martial artists are allowed in there. Khan asks him if he has managed to link the ideas in his heart. Vincent replies that he hasn't been able to, so he would like to take that opportunity to behave. Like a spoiled child. 
Khan agrees, allowing Vincent to enter the lower library, then tells Versa to give Vincent the Crimson Lotus the reward for fulfilling his promise to him. The Crimson Lotus is the sword that Khan used when he was young and began to make a name for himself in the world. It is practically the history of the Atenka family. Julian is happy for what they have achieved, but Vincent makes it clear to him that they will achieve much more in the future. At first, Julian was disappointed that Vincent was not the Spirit King, but he doesn't think he was able to achieve as much by summoning the Spirit King as he had anticipated. He can definitely trust Vincent with his body. Later, Vincent is about to leave with Wilson, but Vincent calls out to him. She tells him that she is very proud of him for what he has achieved. She mentions that since he has won against Ravant, he should enter the Crimson Fortress according to custom. The Crimson Fortress is one of the few training institutes that the Atenka family has. Only those who complete the training at the fortress will be recognized as full martial artists. The requirements for entry would be to win the assembly of the true swords and the subjugation of the low-ranking demon. The Crimson Demon. Vincent replies to Versen that he is not sure yet. She realizes that Vincent's strange movements with the sword make his body suffer. Then she tells him that there is no way to finish off the Crimson Demon in one attack, so Vincent will die if he fights him in his current state. Versen is advising him. She seems to have taken a liking to Vincent. This because it is very likely that she knows something of his story. With the eye that discovers the lie in the new appointment of the Lord, she could have framed Vincent for anything she wanted. But she didn't. Vincent interrupts her and thanks her for the advice. She was trying to explain the Crimson Demon trade, but Vincent left without asking. No doubt he is a fearless martial artist. Versen is happy. As today, Sarvana's son has taken a big step as a martial artist. Wilson was at work and meets this girl, Sari, who immediately complains to him because she thinks is messing with Vincent. But realizing how loyal he is now, she wonders if he is the same Wilson. As before, Wilson tells Sari that Vincent is in the library where only the family's martial artists can enter. In there, Vincent finds no records from 500 years ago. Only that time period is missing. As if it has been removed. There are only children's stories about the Demon King and the Hero King. At this point, Julian suspects that someone erased the records from 500 years ago. The sword skill. 2. Someone erased it or changed it. Vincent will take care of that later. For now, he must. Increase the number of his sword skill to defeat the Crimson Demon. He needs a training. Method before the imagery theory, as right now he cannot reach imagery. Julian asks Vincent for. His true identity. He knows that if he reveals that he is the great demon Davin, Julian will be shocked. However, it would not be respectful, as he is the previous owner of the body he has now. And they both share the same fate. Vincent reveals to Julian his identity. However, upon saying his name, Julian starts acting weird. There is an unbearable sound in his ear. That is why Julian doesn't want to know anymore. Vincent finds a book called First Love with a Watermill. Why is there a book like that in the Mona trading? The odds of a romance book sneaking in there are low. So Vincent knows right away that someone kept secrets and that they are in that book. But at first glance, it is a normal romance book. After reading a bit, Vincent tells Julian that the character in that book has no images, but if it has the power of love as a trait, it is not a normal novel. Traits should not be used to induce the flow of Mona, but the manifestation of traits should be done by making Mona flow. To achieve that, the whole theory of imagery has to be discarded. With imagery, the freedom of Mona makes all these things possible. The book tells of a person who piled up Mona without imagery and lived. With the help of that book, they will be able to manifest traits as well. Julian warns that learning a trait is dangerous, even with the help of imagery, and a trait is a wealth for a martial artist, so they will not easily teach the flow as well. But they definitely found a clue to become stronger. Vincent wants to go for tests, but on his way out, he meets Sari, who already knows everything that has happened and is proud of him. Vincent doesn't know who she is. Julian tells him that Sari is a maid who had left for a while because of a situation in her family. Despite everything, there was someone who gave blind affection to someone like Vincent. Next, Ravan appears, who has something to say to Vincent. They both go to a room. But the atmosphere is quite tense. Moments later, Ravan mentions that he is there to repay the debt to Vincent for the assembly of the true swords. Everything indicated that Ravan would attack. Vincent did not expect it. The same methods will not work against Ravan. Vincent asks Sari to flee. From there, but she refuses, but surprisingly, Ravan wasn't there to fight. He acknowledges that Vincent forgave him and gave him the miracle stone so he could restore his arm. He has regained everything. His arm and his father, but he has not been able to give anything back. Ravan admits 
He was a coward, but he wants to stop being a coward. The best he can do now is to swear loyalty. To Vincent. Still, it was not a hopeless case, although Julian desperately does not want to. Believe what Raven says, but he placed his sword in Vincent's direction. It is an act of giving life. To someone as a martial artist. He is serious. Julian won't trust Raven, but he has an idea. Vincent accepts Raven's oath, and will also stand by him until the moment he betrays him. Raven realizes that Vincent's sword is the Crimson Lotus, so he'll make sure he won't regret. Swearing allegiance. Happy Sari looks at how Vincent has changed, the times when he was called a loser. Or long gone. Julian wants to try something to gain the traits of Raven's Dwarven King's blessing. From there we see Versa, who talks to Khan and tells him that Vincent plans to join the Crimson. Fortress next year. As for conquering the Crimson Demon, Versa tells him the truth. She was going to inform him about the specifics of the demon. But Vincent refused to listen. Crimson demons can only attack with mana of third star or higher, as they have no physical form. The reason conquest is a rite of passage is to see the way someone faces a demon and see proof that they have mana higher than third star. Versa noticed that Raven began to visit Vincent more. To the point of reciting there. Vincent was training, Raven was guiding him, this he does to try and gain the dwarf king's blessing. But they will do so with the methods of the book before. As Vincent has no imagery. Here Raven's loyalty is tested, as for that, Vincent must meditate at his side. Raven feels somewhat pathetic, but does not consider it a bad thing. It is the first time that a defeat feels so good. However, he did not expect that there would be someone who would use such crazy methods in the direct lineage. Julian tries to guide Vincent, because even though Vincent is meditating, he is doing whatever he wants, putting his life on the line of it. Raven tells Vincent that he is too spontaneous. He should take it easy, but this is how Vincent has lived. Even before, when he was Davin, he couldn't win anything without risking his own life. The meditation intensifies, Julian fears that Vincent will die at that rate, but Vincent will force a little more. The flow will be completed if he manages to connect it, but Raven tries to stop him as it is too early to do that. Vincent manages to connect both flows, but a big explosion occurs. Vincent is fine. But he tried to do too much. What he tried took Raven half a year. Back to these two. Cone mentions that it's half a year until the next Crimson Fortress entrance. This event may be an easy one for Vincent, as he's already defeated a two-star martial artist. That's why Cone will give Vincent a month to defeat the Crimson Demon. Rialsa is in charge of taking this message to Vincent. She is worried because a month is too little time. When she enters the room, she finds a complete mess. Both Vincent and Raven injured from the explosion earlier. She asks for a good explanation for everything. Vincent tells Rialsa that he was just meditating a little. Whatever. The meditation is, Rialsa tells him that he must hurry. Next, she gives him Cone's message. He must finish the rite of passage in a month. Julian is surprised. As far as he knew, no time limit had ever been set before, but that means Cone already has high expectations of Vincent. Until a month has passed, Rialsa will accompany Vincent personally as protector, so she expects him to do his best. Raven is worried, as it will take Vincent at least two months to get the Dwarf King's blessing. Vincent knows he must hurry. On the other hand, Sari does not want him to exert himself so much. Next, he notices that Sari has a large amount of mana, but asks him to leave, as he has something to discuss with Raven. Raven tells him that one month is not enough, they must find a different way. Then Vincent meditates again and shows Raven the mana circuit. To everyone's surprise, he has completed the flow, with that he can easily reach the manifestation. There will be no need to wait for a month. It will definitely exceed Cone's expectations. Two weeks later, Vincent trains in the forest. He will start with the manifestation of the traits, then warns that there could be an explosion like last time, so he tells Raven to back off, but Raven insists on staying by his side. Vincent begins, Julian has a strange feeling, then the Dwarf King manifests before them, though only Julian seems to be able to see him. The Dwarf King prepares to attack, but not to harm, this is the blessing of the Dwarf King. The first trait of defense. Strengthening the body, it is the step before the Man of Steel. Raven was surprised, Vincent made it and it hasn't even been a month. With that, Vincent will be able to overcome the burden of the Absolute Sword. He has succeeded in laying the foundation for the subjugation of the Crimson Demon. Vincent thanks Raven, but there is another favor he wants to ask of him. Two days later, Vincent prepares to go to the Crimson Demon's lair. Vincent makes a sudden request to Railsa. As it hasn't been a month yet, she is concerned about this. She mentions that she has protected those who participate in that rite of passage three times. Both Cone and Vincent's brothers and 
the others in the history of the adding key line, and there has not been one who has failed the test. So definitely, Sarvana's son cannot be the first to fail the test. Sarvana is Vincent's mother. In case it's still not clear. Vincent tells Railsa that she has nothing to worry about. He got this. They are on their way to the mission. Vincent doesn't like the idea of having a guardian. On a mission like that, but Julian tells him that there is a loot from the Crimson Demon. Besides, Vincent must be watched. Railsa asks Vincent if he has studied about the Crimson Demon. He tells him that he needs three stars plus mana. That is the first step to subjugate the demon. And in Railsa's eyes, Vincent still doesn't reach three stars. Vincent tells him not to worry. The Crimson Demon is the first monster Vincent will have to subjugate. It's not a monster he has to. Study 4. Railsa warns him not to let his guard down. Railsa strives to help Vincent because she is Vincent's guardian and protector. Vincent again reminds Railsa of the budget embezzlement and suspects she gave him a weakness to latch onto on purpose. But no matter if Railsa doesn't want to talk about it, that's fine. Since she didn't ask about Vincent's training, they are even. Moments later, they finally arrive at the Crimson Demon's Lair, though it has no exact name. It is called the Old Temple. This in memory of Father Arslan. After taking down one of the remains of the great demon Davin, Arslan again, in addition to the Crimson Demon. Vincent believes it is no coincidence. That said, Railsa prepares to create a mana barrier. It is a level that only allows a single monster to pass through the barrier. Next, the Crimson Demon appears before them. Vincent unsheathes his sword and tells Railsa to look carefully and report back exactly what she will see. The Crimson Demon attacks Vincent. Julian tells him to dodge and then get a good path to use Absolute Sword Slash. But Vincent refuses, as increasing the distance between the two will be more advantageous to the one with the longer weapon. For Vincent, it is better to get closer, and that is what he does. Vincent crashes his blade into the demon, while telling him not to even think about using the scythe. Attacking up close against a big weapon is good, but Relsa could see how Vincent's performance was incredible even though it was his first real fight at the age of 14. It was as if he had enough experience after having subjugated the Crimson Demon many times before. The Dwarf King's trade is incredible. It allows Vincent to move an untrained body in a very optimal way. But that is only the basis for finding the way of the sword for Absolute Sword Slash. Next, Vincent sees the opportunity to increase the distance between the two. The Crimson Demon is very aggressive, however. He must be stressed after constantly defending himself, so the next attack he will use will be a big one, which will make him have a lot of openings. Against an opponent with a lot of openings, it is very easy to get the sword path. Vincent will reduce the recoil of Absolute Sword Slash with his trait. Moments later, Vincent manages to defeat the Crimson Demon. Or so he thought, because he doesn't know that the reason why you can't subdue the Crimson Demon with a single attack is because the Crimson Demon has a second life. The Crimson Demon attacks. Vincent using its other life, however, Vincent manages to cut it down. Even that is the same as 500 years ago, but the demon is quite fast. Even its appearance has changed, which means that they evolved over those 500 years. When a Crimson Demon is revived, it goes crazy. The speed and strength they have increases. Vincent keeps dodging the attacks. It is quite dangerous. Besides, the retreat route on the wall is blocked. The demon gives no respite. Next, Julian mentions the temple to Vincent. He insists that they must change the plans. But Vincent wants to make the demon lower his guard. The demon thinks the same to corner Vincent for a final attack. When the demon is fully prepared for the final attack, at that moment, Vincent will carry out the plan. Relsa is a mere overseer, and if she were to interrupt, it would be a failure for Vincent, so she prays to Sarvana that her son can win. Next, Relsa has a flashback with Sarvana. She reached out to her. Relsa survived by stealing on the border of the country. Sarvana asked her to join her. At first, Relsa thought Sarvana was crazy. There she also met. Khan and Versa. They had no choice but to accept Relsa joining them. However, Relsa ended up joining an adventure. That would become the legend of Attica. They defeated an ogre. Relsa. Distracted while Sarvana attacked from behind. Sarvana was really strong and beautiful. She had the power to make people smile. In Relsa's life, Sarvana was a ray of light, until the day came when Sarvana died. This after giving birth to Vincent, but that was not the time to be said. Relsa vowed to protect the child that Sarvana left behind from the hard life of being a direct lineage of Attica, until he became a respectable martial artist. However, Vincent was despised even by his brothers. Relsa contemplated for 14 years the treatment Vincent received. The moment she learns that Vincent was recognized by Khan, she finally begins to see hope. She doesn't want Vincent to 
Give up. The Crimson Demon is about to attack Vincent. Suddenly, Vincent calls Raven and he appears. To block the demon's attack. Relsa is surprised when she notices Raven's presence. Then Vincent meditates on the situation. It is dangerous, because if Raven is pushed and even a small impact hits him, Vincent will die. The fight between Raven and the demon continues. He uses Man of Steel to block the demon's attacks, then provokes him. Which causes the demon's fury. Raven's sword can't get the effect of the Man of Steel. The Crimson Demon realizes that. So he aims straight at the sword until he manages to break it. Without a sword, Raven won't be able to defend Vincent. The demon attacks with his side. Raven manages to hold it for a very short time before he manages to cut him, but he won't be able to resist long. However, he did a good job. Because Vincent had already completed the meditation. The absolute sword slash technique was completed. And with one blow, Vincent manages to hit the Crimson Demon's core and finally defeats him. He then thanks Raven for the help. While that was Vincent's plan. Raven congratulates him, but she's not sure Khan is okay with Vincent getting help. He's supposed to be there to exceed Khan's expectations. Isn't he? Vincent tells Raven that she has controlled the mana barrier so that only one monster could be in it, because the first one already died. The other one will come in to get them. The subjugation before was for Raven. In this one now, Vincent will prove himself. Next, Vincent eats the Miracle Stone to strengthen his body. Even with this, he can only use Absolute Sword Slash twice. He is unable to measure the performance of the Miracle Stone. It is for that reason that he had to meditate. Vincent stiffens his body and waits for the right moment. The Crimson Demon's core is exposed as it regenerates from the damage. It takes Against an opponent who has so many openings, it is much easier to get a path for the sword. Using Absolute Sword Slash, Vincent manages to cut the demon core in two. Re also was worrying. For nothing. Vincent had a flawless performance. However, his body was completely fatigued. Julian wonders what kind of swordsmanship is that, to be in that state after using it a couple of times. The trait, the meditation, and the miracle stone, without any of that it would not have been possible. Julian asks Vincent to lie down, as Re also will move him. But Vincent clarifies that it's like the assembly of the true swords. The real winner is the one who holds out in the end. Vincent refuses to fall. Everything seemed calm, but suddenly a summoning circle was activated. Re also was alerted. As she had never seen anything like this before, it was a relic guardian. Or a Pokemon, however. You want to look at it. The fact that such a large guardian has not been discovered until now means that it is very likely that this guardian was created together with the temple. Re also orders. The Guardian to reveal his mission to the direct lineage of the Atenka family and to show respect. But to no avail, it doesn't work properly because the thing is too old. Re also asks. Riven to take Vincent and they walk away. Re also uses her technique. Baladian Swordsmanship, 7th chapter, then uses an ability to freeze the Guardian until. Finally cutting him. That's the level of a 7th star. But it's not over yet, and Vincent realizes. This. He uses his last strength to cut in that direction with his sword. It was because there was a small guardian right there. Though, in fact, that was the real form of the guardian from before. However, Vincent didn't manage to hit it, and now it's heading towards Riven and Vincent. Re also uses another of her techniques to move quickly in the direction of both of them and finally cut the guardian. Re also was careless at first, which caused her to miss the presence of the guardian's true form. Probably because of how old that structure is, however, Vincent managed to notice and warn her. Moments later, they realized that what the guardian was guarding was just that. Inside that box was a dead dragon bone. A dragon skeleton. It looks like a relic left by the founder Arslan. A dragon skeleton is a super rare magical ingredient. It is a treasure whose value cannot be measured. It seems that was the reason why Arslan made a rite of passage. Re also gives the skeleton to Vincent. Since of all the Atenka who passed through, he was the one who found it. Vincent mentions that such loot would be family possession through presbytery. Re also would be in trouble if anyone found out, but she clarifies that it is a problem. She can deal with. Having said this, Vincent gets up and cuts the skeleton in two. He decides to be Re also's accomplice, as he would have got nothing if it wasn't for her. Re also goes to see Khan, who was at the tomb of the Atenka patriarchs. She informs him that Vincent's ritual of passage has been completed. She tells him that what she saw was very great. Re also tells him that Riven was influenced by Vincent and risked his own life to receive the Crimson Demon's attack. While Vincent managed to subdue the demon. Khan is disappointed, as Vincent was supposed to fight. Alone. But Re also also tells him that Vincent defeated another Crimson Demon on his own. 
and also discovered the dragon skeleton left behind by the founder Arslan. That's the half. That Vincent shared with her. Khan tells Ri also to break the dragon skeleton, a direct order. She stops. Ri also uses Northwind. But despite this, she fails to break it. Khan tells her it's because you have to be a first-class swordsman to break a dragon skeleton. But let's remember that Vincent broke it before with no problem. Khan is sure that soon it will be his turn to die. As Vincent has a special power. Khan asks Ri also to look after Vincent. Vincent returns home. Wilson was worried, but Sari tells him that Vincent must rest because of the after-effects of the demon subjugation. Wilson asks Vincent if he really has to go to the Crimson Fortress. But of course he must. He is afraid of this place because the Crimson Fortress has terrifying monsters and even more terrifying martial artists. Vincent keeps noticing the mana flowing from Ceres. Body and tells Julian. Who never noticed this? Vincent saw a mana flow similar to one from 500. Years ago, then asks Ceres what her surname is. She belongs to the ruined Heiseli family. It is just as Vincent suspected. She has a magical body. The Heiseli family is a family that studied mana and the body. They are also the ones who discovered the heavenly exoskeleton. The Heiselis have a technique called magic body, similar to the heavenly exoskeleton. It is a technique that can introduce mana into the body. This means that if the magic body remains, it can prevent the heavenly exoskeleton from collapsing. Vincent asks Sari if she knows anything more about the Heiseli family, about any elders in the family. But she comments that her grandmother passed away. And the only Heiseli she knew was her. Julian wonders how a family was ruined by such a technique. Vincent answers that it could be a Sami and family thing. Which makes sense if someone tried to hide the existence of the heavenly exoskeleton. They have to silence those who discovered it. Sari remembers something else, there was another person. Vincent's mother, Sarvana, was also a Heiseli. Even Julian is the first time he hears it. But it's because mentioning Sarbana's name was forbidden. This because Khan always seemed sad when that name was mentioned. Wilson mentions that. They are there because of Sarvana, especially Relsa. Who was at her lowest when Sarvana found her. Sarvana was an amazing person. Relsa enters the room to report that Revan is leaving. He mentions that they already have the Crimson Demon and he can't stay there forever. But Vincent asks. Revan for another favor to look into the history of the Heiseli family 500 years ago. It seems to have been tampered with by someone, but maybe the collateral lines weren't touched. Something like the love book they encountered earlier. That said, it's a deal they both say. Goodbye and hope to see each other soon. Revan promises to become stronger by the time they meet. Again. Vincent asks Relsa if she is kind to him as a way of repaying Sarvana. She says yes. Then Vincent asks her for a favor, not as Sarvana's son, but as Vincent Adenka until he enters the Crimson Fortress, Vincent wants Relsa to train him. After some thought, Relsa agrees, but warns Vincent that she will not go easy on him. The training between the two begins, Vincent can learn a trait. Without imagery, but for that he needs a mana circuit with a trait. Relsa will not use the weapon she used against the Guardian. The Black Moon, she tells Vincent that he will face that sword when he is worthy. He has five months until the Crimson Fortress. If he manages to hurt Relsa, at least once, she will grant him the trait he needs. Vincent is afraid of hurting Relsa like he did. Revan, but she is nothing like him. Relsa moves quickly towards Vincent, who only narrowly defends himself. Relsa knows the power of the sword path very well. That's why she won't give Vincent a chance to use it. The look in Relsa's eyes was that of a person who could kill someone. Relsa already knows that Vincent is a friend of the priest Dalin, so if they need help, they will go to him. One week later the training continues, Relsa still has the advantage over Vincent, however. He doesn't give more than two attacks, as that would be too much for him. So they will stop there. Relsa has noticed a lot of improvement in Vincent, but the sword he is using breaks again. She has lost count of how many times she has changed swords in the last few days. So she goes to complain to the blacksmith. Relsa tells the blacksmith, whose name is Hansen, that since the last time they met, it doesn't seem that the title of master is the only thing he has lost. She warns him that it would be a problem if he supplies rubbish in adding to his armory. Relsa shows all the broken swords to Hansen. He finds it strange. He even asks her if she has fought with some kind of demon with sharp claws or against some nine star warrior, or with some master of the sword, as it has not been the case. She answers that she has only been training with Vinson. Relsa, accompanied by Hansen, does to see Vinson. This because she wants to know why. Vinson has the Crimson Lotus, Hansen was the one who forged that weapon. Julian recognizes him. He is a famous blacksmith. 
Besides being an old friend of Khan and a master who used to belong to Orinka, yes, he used to be a master, but not now. Hansen has been making high quality cereal products for decades without making a sword. The blacksmith was ignored because he was blinded by money. That's why he lost his honor and is not positioned in adding to. Vincent acknowledges that Hansen is incredible, as many people were able to protect themselves. Thanks to him. Hansen prioritized other people over his own honor. Vincent presents himself to him in a respectful way, which makes Hansen happy. Vincent tells Hansen that he made the right decision by taking the path he chose. Immediately, Hansen remembers that Khan once told him the same thing. He begins to believe that this kind of attitude runs in his family. Hansen admits that he thought he was the ugly Vincent, but now knows that these were just rumors. Hansen asks him for the Crimson Lotus to keep an eye on the condition of the sword. Having used this sword for training, Hansen is surprised because the blade is not damaged at all. It is as if it is not a sword, but the strength of a man. Hansen asks Vincent what kind of swordsmanship he uses. Vincent refuses. Julian also, as Vincent has used both charges of the swordsmanship skill today. Vincent is aware of that, but it is not every day you meet a master, so he doesn't want to miss the opportunity. Sari shows up and tells Hansen that he should go to sleep. They know each other because Hansen has been sponsoring children in need, and Sari was one of them. They are like father and daughter. That said, Vincent tells Hansen that he will see him at the workshop tomorrow. Hansen says, Goodbye. Vincent can now see where Sari's warm heart comes from. The next morning, as promised, Vincent uses the Crimson Lotus in front of Hansen. Hansen gets a strange sword. It is like the legend of a hero and the demon king. Now he can see that it is not for nothing that Vincent was given. The Crimson Lotus. Hansen mentions that he is interested in Vincent. Almost enough to want to make him a sword, however, one thing is missing, Hansen has had a sword in mind for a long time. But it needs rare materials, so Vincent will try to get it. It is a precious mineral that cannot be obtained even for a fee. It is called Mastodon Horn. Both Vincent and Julian see each other's faces because they already have one. Can Hansen really make a sword out of it? Hansen is surprised. That Vincent has such a thing. Vincent asks him to keep quiet, as it is something only common and rails to know. Hansen will now make him a sword. But Vincent asks out of curiosity if it is possible to add the horn to Crimson Lotus instead of making a completely new sword, as that blade symbolizes the beginning of Khan's career. Besides, Crimson Lotus is amazing, and Vincent likes it a lot. That said, Hansen agrees to Vincent's request and will add the horn to Crimson Lotus within three weeks. Three weeks later, they go to see Hansen and find that the workshop is on fire. Vincent asks. Sorry to control herself for her to be surprised like this. Something unusual must have happened. In the smithy. Vincent decides to go find Hansen on his own. His sword can cut through anything. He will cut the fire and the door at once. Even though Julian tells him it's reckless. Vincent does it anyway, as he enters. Julian visualizes Hansen unconscious. Julian also realizes that there is Crimson Lotus there. Everything indicated that the mana was overflowing. The dragon skeleton was much stronger than Hansen expected. But they must take care of getting him to safety first. But soon after, Vincent realizes that the exit is blocked. Julian asks Vincent if he knows any defensive technique, because no matter if it is the dragon skeleton, he won't be able to keep the flames forever. Vincent has something. A sword technique meant only for defense. He is Vincent Adenka, but he was also Davin. Samian. Vincent uses Samian Swordsmanship Chapter 1, Breaker. The smooth sword breaks steel. The quality of his mana depends on his will. Slowly, he strikes the flow of flames approaching him. With an infinitely silent sword. Julian was surprised to witness the Samian Swordsmanship. But he still does not know Vincent's true identity. After a while, the flames finally die down. Hansen regains consciousness and realizes that Vincent used the Sami in swordsmanship. If Hansen was able to recognize the skill, Vincent supposes it is not entirely forgotten. But best of all, the sword is complete. Hansen tells him that he must hold it. But he must do something with the fire. As he touches the sword, Vincent feels the sensation of the blade resonating with him. It is a great sword. Next, Julian notices something odd. If this was all arranged by the patriarch Arslan, wouldn't he know that the dragon skeleton would behave? This way? Had it been him, he would have left some precautions. Maybe the dragon bone was left. To practice before the next dragon skeleton. Seeing this, Vincent asks Hansen to make him a new sword. He is sure that since he has made one, the next one will be even better, although Hansen mentions that it will take some time. As he has to clean up the whole mess, besides, he has no dragon skeletons anymore. 
and he doesn't think he will be alive for the next time there is one. But what Hansen doesn't know is that there is actually another one. The piece that Relsa had. Hansen's mouth drops open at the sight of another dragon bone, but Relsa tells him to shut up. Only Khan knows about that. Hansen doesn't know how long it will take, but he will make a perfect. Sword. Vincent apologizes to Relsa as that piece of bone was originally meant for her. But it doesn't matter, because she already received full payment for the dragon skeleton. Fourteen years ago when an outstanding warrior was born. Vincent tells Relsa that she will be more than. Satisfied, as with the help of the new sword, she will learn all her moves and defeat her. But Relsa doesn't back down a single step. The training between Vincent and Relsa continues. Even with upgraded Crimson Lotus, Vincent is not being able to stand up to Relsa. Though at least he manages to parry the attacks, even though she is using her power at level 4. Besides, Crimson Lotus is still intact. Vincent strikes back and Relsa narrowly dodges. The flow and power of the sword is different from before. The sword is unable to break. Thanks to the Dwarf King's trait, Crimson Lotus absorbs all attacks, a sword that absorbs the trait of the users. This is the new power of Crimson Lotus. Relsa tells him that Crimson Lotus has become more powerful, given that Relsa will go a little more serious. She disappears and moves quickly around Vincent, who decides not to get carried away by the speed and chooses to feel the mana she uses to move. She attacks. But to the wrong place, however, she manages to hold Relsa's sword using only her hands. She is surprised, as Vincent has been able to detect her. Movements in a month, Vincent uses double sword strike, Relsa received no damage. However, she lost her sword, although Vincent gives it back to her as he doesn't want to win in such a dirty way. She tells him that this was an act of arrogance, as not all martial artists and monsters will be gentle with him. Opponents who are stronger than Vincent will not show any sympathy. She makes it clear to him that he must remember that. This while she increased her aura, Relsa prepares to attack, but as she does so, she collapses and Vincent holds her up, as well as wounding her a little on the forehead. There are four months left before going to the Crimson Fortress. Relsa asks Vincent how he did it. He replies that even with double sword strike, it would have been impossible to hit her. However, he cut through the mana around her. This to block her trait, she didn't even know this was possible, so Vincent ends up surpassing all expectations, as he won, Relsa has to keep her promise. She has to tell him about her blessing. The flow of mana from the galaxy wanderer. Later, Vincent is meditating. Relsa tells Vincent that when he lets the mana flow through the path, it will begin to manifest. Julian was a little afraid of what might happen, but moments later, he notices the presence of something. Meanwhile, in the Crimson Fortress, Dean Vargon Pagoda and Headmaster Herka Quebel were meeting. She notices that Vincent is among the next to enter the Crimson Fortress. Vargon still believes the rumor is that Vincent is a loser, so he thinks he won't achieve anything in the Crimson Fortress, so before Vincent signs up, he wants to stop him at all costs. We return to Vincent meditating. Julian notices the presence of someone else. The Galactic Wanderer's blessing trait consists of only one step. After it was very cold, Julian realizes that the girl disappeared. The name of this trait comes from the fact that it has a mobility that leaves no trace even in the snow. It is called Frost Walk. Later, Julian tells Vincent that the Crimson Fortress is more of a real fortress than a training school. That place is located in the mountains bordering Samian. In the past, when the followers of the Archidmen invaded Samian, Arslan, like the heroes of that era, served as a defense there and it was seen as a training school thereafter. Vincent thinks they might find something else left by Arslan. Maybe another bone. Julian doesn't know if it's a skeleton, but there is also a legendary treasure there. It's called Heavenly Fruit. It is more effective than any other elixir. There are even rumors that one of them can raise the dead. There is also a Heavenly Fruit tree, a tree that produces thousands of such fruits. The Crimson Fortress is said to be a pot for the thousands of fruit trees. In the past, Julian would not have believed such a legend, but looking at the situation now, he wonders if the next goal will be to obtain the heavenly fruit. With it, they will heal Vincent's body and escape death. Once they are enrolled in the Crimson Fortress, they will have nine years left. But Vincent thinks it could be less. That said, they will discover the secrets of the heavenly fruit and obtain it. According to the information obtained by Vincent, he will have to fend for himself without the financial support of the family in the Crimson Fortress, this to avoid cheating with money. So they will have to get their own money, but it doesn't matter because Julian invested in a place called the Sixth Magic Tower. If the Adenka and Samian families are known for their swordsmanship, then the Sixth Magic Tower is known for being an elite mage course. There you can sponsor research mages and get back money as a contribution. The mage Julian invested in, whose name is Varnelli Pagoda, has just become the co-owner of the 
Tower. The bad part of it all is that the investment will turn to trash when Barnelli dies, but with someone like her die easy. Well apparently yes, what bad luck later on, Varnelli's death is reported. They assume she died in an explosion during an investigation. But the reality is that she was murdered, goodbye to Julian's money. Without the money, Vincent will starve to death in the fortress. Varnelli left all his possessions and research to his younger brother, Varnelli Pagoda, yes. This guy from before. He laments that despite being a pagoda, he never achieved anywhere near the potential that Varnelli had. That said, Vincent has to search for Varnelli. The time remaining is four months. He must gather as much information as he can and become as strong as possible until four months later, in the mountains of the Crimson Fortress, Vincent was on his way together with Relsa and Sari. But they reached a point where for safety, they must continue walking. Relsa tells Vincent that if he follows that path, the director of the Crimson Fortress will come to guide him. Vincent does not know how to express gratitude to Relsa, she asks him to take care of himself. Varnelli informs the headmistress that Vincent will be arriving soon. She finds this annoying as it is not her style to be formal and guide people. Next, through this rock, they speak to Herka and tell her that recently, there have been monsters invading the local residences around the area. Herka will go, as after all it is her duty as headmistress to defend the residents of the fortress. But they tell her that since it is a weak monster, to send someone else. But Herka ignores this and leaves. As for Vincent, Varnelli has no choice but to guide him. Varnelli notices that Vincent was accompanied by Relsa. He had heard that Vincent was a good for nothing. But he didn't expect him to be so useless to the point where he needs someone strong like Relsa to look after him. One of the guards asks Varnelli if they will lower the difficulty of the exam. But he replies that it will be the same as the previous years, after all. Varnelli wants to eliminate Vincent before he has a chance to enter the fortress, that said. The first exam. The subjugation of the illusory monster begins. Back with Vincent and the others. They can already see the Crimson Fortress. But suddenly, it starts to glow. Vincent already knew that the testing of the fortress had started. In these last four months, he has become very strong. It was time to test the strength he got from training with Relsa. Vincent is right in front of a monster, the strongest predator of the Snowy Mountain, the Blue-Eyed with Tiger. Vincent tells Sari and Wilson that when he is out of sight, they must run as fast as they can to the Crimson Fortress. Vincent runs and catches the monster's attention. If it is the kind of soft, blue-eyed tiger he knows, it will react to the fast movements of the target. And so it does. Vincent catches its attention, however, something doesn't feel right. Although it looks a bit like a white blue-eyed tiger, it doesn't look like one. It doesn't feel like a living monster. But that doesn't change the fact that he will defeat it anyway. When Vincent attacks him, another one appears, Vincent manages to dodge them by jumping? There are not two. Not three. There are a lot more, there are eighteen in total. Julian tells him that it will be impossible to defeat them all with just two hits of absolute sword slash, but Vincent still thinks the same. There is something strange about this situation. These monsters don't usually travel in packs. They are the strongest predator, so they don't need to. And even though they are carnivorous, they don't emit blood essence. Julian tells him that they must be illusions created with magic. And so it is, they are illusions created by Vargon, who wonders if Vincent already noticed. But despite that, nothing will change. At high rank summoning illusory magic, there's a little difference between real tigers and those illusions. Besides, they are smarter if a human is controlling them. Vincent says they can hold out for a bit, as if they are tigers made of high-ranking magic. The user will run out of mana soon, but Julian tells him it's impossible, as they must be using an assembly element. That is a method of using multiple spells of the same type at the same time. Instead of using numerous spells, one is designated as its assembly element. It makes copies. Conveniently. Reducing mana usage. This means that if they take over the designated one, all the others will disappear. Vincent could tell because a human controls the tigers. In those instances, a real monster would be in the front line, whereas if it is a human, it will try to protect the assembly element, the one that is up the hill and not moving. That is the assembly element. Vincent uses the trait he learned from Rails to move quickly. Using Frostwalk, reaching the assembly element in an instant. Varjan doesn't want to let Vincent move any further. Vincent's Crimson Lotus which has been strengthened with the Dragon Skeleton. Absorbs his mana properties, using Absolute Sword Slash combined with Galactic Wanderers. Blessing trait. Can allow him to easily finish off the opponent, making the rest of the tigers. Disappear just as he had premeditated. Varjan realizes something. Vincent didn't take down the illusion. What he did was disconnect them on a circuit. 
Vincent definitely has a deep understanding of magic. It looks like it's about time Varjan swallowed his words. Since Varjan's magic has been bent, he has no choice but to open the gates to receive Vincent. The fortress is usually a headquarters for martial artists. Is it common to find mages of that level? Julian replies no. All indications are that the research they did was correct. At the gates of the fortress, Sari and Wilson were waiting for Vincent. Varnell's younger brother, Varjen, is a mage who takes over the practical work of the fortress. Varjen and the others welcome Vincent, but ain't no way bro. They're giving out their hearts. Shinzuo Saseijo. Vincent finally meets Varjen. Julian mentions that. They can't bring the family funds to the fortress, but there is a sponsorship system. A talented cadet. Can be sponsored by the fortress, so they will get the necessary points with that person and get back all the money they invested in the magic tower. Hopefully, there are quite a lot of people. In the fortress, children from various families live there, instructors, priests, soldiers, as a result of this, Vincent will have a group life in a dormitory, but it will not be uncomfortable for him. Varjan adds that living there will involve being a cadet of the fortress. All other identities will be discarded. Vincent will wear the same uniform as these girls, but it will be issued to him tomorrow. Vincent asks Varjan what level he is at now. Varjan replies that all cadets will take the promotion test twice a year, starting from level 9. The levels go from 9 to 1, and if Vincent passes the promotion test after level 1, he will be recognized as a true warrior and graduate from the fortress. Vincent knows he must graduate as soon as possible. For in four and a half years he must find the heavenly fruit he seeks to prevent the death of that body. Varjan asks Vincent if he had aimed to hit the blue-eyed white tiger that was the center of his magic, Vincent nods. Then Varjan asks Vincent how he knows about magic when he comes from a family of martial artists. Julian says that since he was pitiful at martial arts, he has researched everything. Vincent replies that since knowledge is power, he doesn't think it's complicated to differentiate things that way. Varjan is surprised to see the confidence and talent Vincent has. He can't understand how he was called a good for nothing. Vincent has something to ask Varjan. He gets to the point. How do you get the miracle fruit? Varjan thinks this is just a legend. So he replies to Vincent that maybe the heavenly fruit chooses its own owner. Julian thoughtfully realizes that Varjan also considers the heavenly fruit to be a mere legend. All indications are that gaining information will be tricky. After a while, they finally arrive at the rank 9 dormitories. The servants, Sari and Wilson will live on the first floor, while Vincent will reside on the third floor. Then he hands Vincent the medal indicating that he is a rank 9 cadet. Varjan teaches Vincent the welcome greeting to the Crimson Fortress. Vincent arrives at his residence, where there were more people who were acting strange. He even thinks it is because he did something wrong. Then this guy calls him good for nothing. He is the rank 9 cadet. Direct representative? Sixth son of the Atenka family, Malone. Vincent has no idea who he is, but Julian makes it clear to him that this bastard is his older brother. He also makes it clear that this person is the one who is bothering him the most, even forcing him to eat rubbish. Vincent reaches. Malone is a guy whose daily life is to bully the weak with force, and those actions affect the people in the room as well. Since Malone soils the Atenka's honor, he plans to scold him a bit. Julian agrees. Unexpectedly, he shakes his hand. Malone backs off a bit saying they weren't that close his family. But this was all Vincent's plan to make fun of Malone. Since even though he left town quite some time ago, he's still a guy who's rank 9. For no sense whatsoever, Malone beats up this guy named Sizen because he's supposed to educate the new guys. This guy is the worst. Vincent has a bitter memory. That guy reminds him a lot of Cajun. That's why moments later, he punches him in the face. Leaving everyone with their mouths open. That makes Malone angry and wants to fight back. There is something that Vincent learned from that era, and that is that in that era they don't care about martial arts. So without any problem, Vincent manages to take Malone down. Then, he addresses everyone in the room and tells them that the only fear they are allowed is martial artists. Is respect, so they must overcome their fears as the only way to become a martial artist. Malone gets up again and very angrily, now tries to attack Vincent with a sword. Vincent manages to dodge the attack. Julian tells him that if he does well in that situation, he can turn that into an opportunity. Meanwhile, in Allah, a village near the fortress, Kirka manages to defeat the monsters that were stalking the inhabitants. They want to buy her a drink as a thank you. But she is at work, she can't do that. Still, it's not polite to refuse an invitation. 
so she accepts behind her is Vargon, who already realized that Herka is wasting her time and is angry. When they are drinking, Vargon tells Herka that Vincent managed to find the assembly element and destroyed it, but she has no idea what this means, as she is not a mage. In short, and to make it more understandable for her, Vincent knew about and how to take down something that even a rank. Seven martial artist had never heard of. She is not surprised, as another direct descendant. Demolished the whole mountain or something. Vincent sounds a bit more cowardly to her. She then laughs at Bargon and tells him that he must be thrilled to have found someone more cowardly than himself, but they can't talk any further, because they have already been informed about the incident between Malone and Vincent. They require the presence of a mediator during a fight. This girl, called Braun, an instructor in the Class 9 dorm apologizes to Bargon. Because in the first place, because it was a direct confrontation, she accepted the cadet's request. Both Vincent and Malone are subject to disciplinary action for causing a disturbance in the dormitory, but since there was a cadet's uniform, he'll let it slide that time, then with the authority of the Crimson Fortress and the measure of confrontation. The two can compete, though Vargon hopes they do so with honor. Malone is frightened when he sees the Crimson Lotus, he even thinks it is a counterfeit product. He bets his right wrist that the sword is a fake. Vincent tells him that he will have to take responsibility for having uttered those words. Malone uses his trait which is intimidation, instills fear in the opponent, but Vincent is right, a sword bearish should not fear another. He can ignore the effects of intimidation with spirit and determination. Malone thinks that the ability doesn't affect him because he is a bit far away. Then Malone attacks. With his mana and sword, he thinks he hit Vincent. But Vincent was behind him and hit him, there he realizes that Vincent is able to use Frosty Walk. He is also able to increase his power with strong conviction. Finally, Vincent manages to defeat him. Everyone knew that Malone was a scumbag. Yet the reason he held the position of cadet representative was because of the overwhelming strength he had among the ninth class, but Vincent shakes that position now. This girl, whose name is Selvira, wonders what they are all doing there. Next, she sees Malone lying on the floor. The boy next to her admires Vincent and wants to become like him, however, Selvira tells him that it is not over yet. As Malone's intimidation is a separately acquired characteristic, he has a very rare innate protection. Julian wanted Vincent to keep hitting Malone, but Malone notices something. Odd. Even though Malone's sword fell, Vargon still hasn't declared victory, and this is because. Shortly after, Malone gets up using electricity, it's the blessing of the lightning giant. Things seem to have gotten a little complicated for Vincent. Malone's attack damages Vincent's. Arm. Malone is using the microcurrent boost trait. Julian is confused, as Malone's trait was. Supposed to be the intimidate trait. Malone mentions that this ability is new, as he learned it after. Arriving at the fortress. Vincent asks him why he hid it for years. He replies that he wasn't hiding. Anything, it just annoyed him. With the coercion trait, no one his age could defeat him. He doesn't. Think it's necessary to go through the painful and hard training, once the time comes. The fortress. Will have no choice but to let him graduate since he is a direct descendant. He unlike other people. Doesn't feel he has to work like a dog. Vincent tells him to stop talking nonsense. Makes it clear that Malone's power is something a person works for his whole life and never achieves. He is not only shirking the responsibility of that power, but Malone also ignores and tramples on the efforts of others, as well as trampling on the reputation of the Atenka family name. Malone mocks him for having an injured arm. He tells him that he only has the right to say such things to him only if he defeats him. Next, Malone launches an attack on Vincent. Vincent gets serious and dodges. Malone had said earlier that that Crimson Lotus was fake, right? While Vincent will take his right risk just like he said. Of the two hits, Vincent has used one on. The illusory monsters. He will end that fight using the power of the Dwarf King in absolute. Sword slash, but that's something Malone won't allow. He starts throwing many attacks against. Vincent, who tries to dodge everything. Vargon watched as Malone was drunk on his own mana. He's not controlling himself at all, he's destroying everything. Some debris is about to. Fall on sorry. But Vargon protects her, he then tells Braun to evacuate all the cadets. While. He teleports Sari with his magic to safety. However, he notices that Sari's body is covered in mana. Malone continues to get out of control. Vincent recognizes that it is a very powerful trait. But he has a lot of openings. He needs to take advantage of one to go all center using Frostwalk. However, he makes a misstep because he can't hold the ability for long and ends up getting hit. Vincent is close to his limit. Vargon admits that it was his negligence that things ended up this way. As before the fight started, he should have placed the mana barrier that he will place now. This is not so good for Vincent, as the space to escape is reduced. He will not be able to avoid Malone's attacks. 
The fight is complicated. Vincent is losing strength and Frostwalk is on the edge. Julian tells Vincent that he can cut some more using Absolute Sword Slash. Vincent will trust. Julian's strategy. Vincent climbs on the mana barrier using his last Frostwalk. Malone prepares. To attack him and when he does, he falls into Vincent's trap, which breaks the barrier and causes Malone's attack to come out of it. Hitting the structures and causing a collapse. All the debris falling on him. Vincent tells Malone that a martial artist's Soth is heavier than anything else. At this point, Vincent can't look like a liar. So he makes good on what he said and slashes Malone's right wrist. Vargon is surprised as the mana barrier he had prepared was at a completely different level. It was an airtight space made of various spells, but Vincent managed to cut it with a simple sword. Attack! Vargon gives Vincent as the winner. As Vincent ordered Wilson, he brought the priest. He is a fifth-class priest. His name is Sheban. Sheban asks Vincent how he could have something as valuable as a level 2 priest's badge, but as he is a level 5 priest, he is in no position to question. Then offers to heal Vincent's wounds. Malone laughs and thinks it was pre-planned. So he tells Vincent to tell the priest to heal his wounds, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Because before we started fighting, Malone gave his word and staked his right hand. As an official warrior, so if he heals his hand, it would ruin his honor, right? Julian is happy to have gained revenge, while Vincent wishes never to become his enemy. Malone has no choice but to put honor aside and beg for his hand to be cured, Vincent tells the priest to cure him. After healing his hand, Malone is warned that it is best to avoid strenuous exercise, as the healing is less than perfect. This boy wants to be like Vincent. He tells him that he will go far if he can overcome his fear. Malone thinks how arrogant Vincent is and that everyone will follow him immediately, like the frustrated coward that he is. Malone does not accept defeat and plans to attack treacherously, but Vargen stops him and tells him that the reason he ignored tyranny was because he was a commander. But to be a commander, you must be able to raise your sword. A week later, they go to see Vargen. Julian teaches Vincent to express condolences to Vargen's sister. He acknowledges that Vincent was an acquaintance of his sister, but he is four months late in expressing condolences. One day, Vincent will once again be the seventh son of the family. While Vargen is a former mercenary. Since Vincent knew his sister, Vargen asks him what his purpose is. Vincent tells him that he was a sponsor of Varnelli. At first, Vincent wanted to be paid back. But after he heard Vargen's story while investigating, he saw himself. Vargen was a child with no talent. Oppressed by the rest, having heard that. Vincent wanted to share his story. After Vargen left behind. The family that abandoned him in the spirit tower. He lived as a mercenary, and after a long time. He got a job in the Crimson Fortress. Vargen has no feelings for his family, nor for his sister. But Vincent says that if that is the case, why Vargen still doesn't leave the pagoda name. Everyone lost the respect they had from Malone. This makes him even angrier, and his desire to take revenge on Vincent increases. Then an entity appears before him and asks him if he wants to kill Vincent. This thing offers him its help to do it. We pick up the conversation between Vargen and Vincent. The reason he doesn't give up the pagoda name is because this is a family of wizards who have always been in the tower from generation to generation. Being a mercenary, that could have been a hindrance. Vargen shushes Vincent by telling him he is just a brat who doesn't have any stars. He doesn't know the things Vargen had to go through, or how he felt about leaving the magic tower. Vargen mentions that if the Adenka and Samian families go to war, he would destroy the magic tower for ruining his life. Vincent was similar to him, but what he wanted in the end was not revenge, but acceptance and love. He tells Vargen that the reason he has not abandoned the pagoda name is because he still has an attachment to that family. Farnali, unlike Vargen, was very talented and brilliant. Vargen put up with all the bullying he received because of the admiration he had for her, but at the same time, Vargen made him more miserable, as he was under a lot of pressure. Because they wanted him to be like her, which is why he eventually left his family behind. Vargen admits that he thought he could see through Vincent's intentions, but it was the other way. Around. He never expected to hear life advice from a brat. Thanks to this, Vargen can now be more honest with his feelings. Moments later, Vargen agrees to promote Vincent in the fortress. So he no longer has to worry. He practically has the investment money back. Julian mentions that with Vargen that makes three, Vincent thinks Julian is treating him like some kind of con man. But no, everything he told them was sincere. Silbera and Sizen go to see Vincent and congratulate him on earning Vargen's promotion. Silbera introduces herself to Vincent as the representative secondary cadet. It's the first time they've met practically as the girls use the first floor. Vincent had never heard of a representative secondary cadet before, but 
Silbera is responsible for reporting everything to the instructors. Next, Vincent notices it. That feeling, although the level is not yet comparable, Silbera gives off the same feeling as her mother. And indeed, Silbera is able to see the opponent's power and hidden potential thanks to the traits she possesses. So she uses it to find out how Vincent managed to defeat Malone. Where she realizes that Vincent has no imagery. And the crimson color it emits means that it is not possible for her to evaluate Vincent's hidden potential. Vincent is not very pleased that she wants to use her trait that way on him. Silbera wonders how she knew, since if it's the first time, even instructors can't sense it. Vincent asks them both what they are doing there. Silbera tells him that it is forbidden for cadets to roam alone at night. Sizen tells Vincent that it is dangerous for him to roam alone at night. They usually use the buddy system. Silbera annoys him by telling him that he may encounter Davin's evil spirit. Hearing this, Vincent asks Silbera for more details about the evil spirit he spoke of. Sizen mentions that after the Archidemon Davin lost to the Hero King, his spirit was dispersed all over the world, so there are still remnants on the loose who make contracts with martial artists and provide them with great strength. These remnants give people enough power to accomplish goals using their lives as collateral, so the Archidemon Davin really existed. Wasn't it a legend to frame him for everything? Silbera mentions that from time to time, people are reported to form contracts with Davin's remains, but she doesn't really believe in such things. An evil spirit from 500 years ago, there is no way such a thing exists. Right? Well, that doesn't seem to be the case, because the entity that appeared in front of Malin was one of these remnants of the evil spirit, and it tells Malin to form a contract with it so that it can fulfill whatever it wants. Malin asks the entity if it is the evil spirit of Davin, but it refuses to answer, telling him that the important thing is that it can help Malin achieve his goal, to regain his position as king of the place. Vincent enters the room accompanied by Sizen. Everyone is asleep, Vincent notices that Malin is not there. Sizen is left to go back. Alone in the dark night. Soon after, he realizes that there is something stalking him without a word. This thing cuts off Sizen's arm. This creature was aiming for Sizen's throat, and that creature is none other than Malin, who consumed by hatred for Vincent. Let this evil spirit consume him. Sizen immediately notices that Malin made a contract with an evil spirit. Malin freaks out. When he sees Sizen pointing the sword at him, he is no longer afraid of Malin. However, right. Now he is no match for him. Malin is about to execute Sizen, but before he can harm him, he is saved by the instructor Braun. Seeing Malin's condition, she points out that he has abandoned the pride of a martial artist. Braun's attack did nothing to Malin, so she tells Sizen to sound the alarm. In the room, Vincent wonders why Malin hasn't returned. Moments later, he hears the alarm. And everyone wakes up. On his way out, he meets Selbera, who still doesn't know what is happening. Then, Vincent smells blood. Vincent tells Selbera to notify the dean about the situation using the crystal as it is an emergency. Things don't look good. Vincent knows they will need help from someone higher up. Vincent asks everyone to join him outside. The alarm stops, so does the flow of mana was the battle over. They must hurry. Vincent asks Selbera if they have any defensive seals they can use. Vincent knows that the initial battle is over. The fact that they have not been contacted means that the opponent won. Selbera learns something. One of the seven basic seals of Atenka, the triangular defensive seal. But, at the vertices of the triangle must be a five-star martial artist or higher. If this condition is not met, the seal will lose balance and collapse. Selbera tells her that if they meet the instructor Braun, they will be able to manifest the seal. When they leave, they find traces of much blood, and instructor Braun badly wounded. Malin immediately attempts to attack Vincent, who manages to repel the attack. Vincent learns that the identity of the thing is his brother Malin. Selbera tells Vincent that the aura Malin gives off is the same aura that the martial artists, who were possessed by Davin's evil spirit, had. Vincent finds it impossible. Since he is there, if he had to fight Davin's spirit, would he be fighting himself? Malin begins to unleash his power, becoming stronger than before. Vincent asks everyone not to be afraid, as they are martial artists. He asks them not to be afraid and to grab the swords. Once again, Vincent managed to free himself from Malin's coercion. The five-star martial artist Braun was easily defeated. Vincent is not sure he can handle the situation, so they need the help of the reinforcements that Selbara asked for. Until those reinforcements arrive, Vincent must resist accompanied by a bunch of inexperienced rank 9 cadets. Vincent tells Selbara to let everyone know that they will manifest the triangular defensive seal together. They need a 5-star martial artist? Yes, but that will be taken care of by Vincent. 
he will go in the center of the seal. Selbera tells him that this is impossible. As he is not a five star. If he does so, he will collapse as soon as the seal manifests. Vincent tells Selbera to assume her role and make the decision that will protect everyone. That said, she asks everyone to form the defensive triangular seal and use Vincent as the center. Malin laughs because he thinks they will die trying. Maybe they will, but if Malin turns out to be blocked by the seal even after forming a contract with an evil spirit, that will be really humiliating for him. Julian tells Vincent that it won't work, they'd better run away. Vincent mentions that they could have run a long time ago, but if they had, everyone behind him would have died. With the cadets in formation, they begin to manifest the defensive triangle seal. Vincent feels as if his mana is exploding, but he must endure it. Malin laughs as Vincent is about to collapse as soon as the seal begins, then attacks. But the attack is blocked, this because Vincent stiffens the weight of the seal. Malin prepares to attack again, but fails to penetrate the defenses. Vincent watched in awe at the incredible strength with which Malin struck, thanks to the evil spirit. The lightning giants has become even stronger. Malin continued to attack. The cadets watched. As the archidemon manifested itself before them. Vincent asks them not to be afraid. They must. Remember what he told them before. The only fear they are allowed to feel as martial artists. Is respect. They must not be afraid of an idiot who has abandoned his honor. Selbera noticed how Vincent was trying to boost the morale of everyone while at the same time. Managing to keep the weight of the seal. She wonders if he is really a 14-year-old boy. On Selbera's signal, the cadets will charge Nana. After a count of three, the seal seems to begin. To take effect. They pull Malin back a little. The senior martial artists must arrive soon. They have to hold on a little longer. Vincent tells Malin that if he surrenders and admits his wrongdoings, he can avoid the worst-case scenario. The evil spirit incites Malin to kill everyone. This makes him stand up once again. He wants to see everyone die as they tremble in fear. Vincent noticed that Malin's mana became stronger. Moreover, he is preparing to unleash a great attack. Malin attacks again, causing the ground to shake. Selbera tells everyone to watch out for the rocks. Well, this one wasn't very careful. He didn't see it coming. Thanks to this, the defensive seal loses strength. Malin throws himself at Vincent with every intention of killing him. Vincent prepares to receive the attack. Fortunately, he doesn't make it through the defenses because Sizen crawled to form part of the triangle. Sizen has told Malin before he's not afraid of him. Malin gets even angrier. The cadets have to hold on a little longer. The seal is almost at its limit. Sizen won't be able to hold on much longer. Vincent notices something. He wasn't even going to stab him. Still, he's being able to see the path of the sword. A black sword path through Malin's right hand. However, waiting for reinforcements is the first priority. But the defensive seal is on edge. To slash or not to slash, Vincent was torn between the two options. Moments later, running out of options, he tells Selbera that the seal is about to break, so they must brace. For impact. Vincent uses Absolute Sword Slash, Alternative Form, Chapter 2. Although he followed the path of the sword, he failed to stab him properly. He must try again. Malin turns around and prepares an attack on Vincent. Who takes the blow full on? He was hit in the left hand. So he can't get a proper grip on the sword. But this is no time to back off. He tries to slash properly. But Malin holds his arm before he can strike. Malin hurts Vincent's arm, causing him to drop the sword. If this was Vincent's previous life, he would not have had a chance to do what he will do now. He holds the sword with his right hand and uses absolute sword slash once again to successfully slash Malin's arm. Vincent believes he defeated him, but this is not over yet. Despite losing an arm, Malin refuses to back down. However, the aura of the evil spirit is gone. Perhaps that unknown black sword path was a way to sever the connection between Malin and the evil spirit. Still, Malin wants to keep fighting and prepares to attack again. If he wants to stop him completely, Vincent needs to stab him one more time. But the worst happens, Vincent can't move. Vincent refuses to die without knowing what happened. 500 years ago. When Malin was about to kill Vincent, he is trapped with ropes. Vargen was there. But he was not alone. Herka was also accompanying him. She mentions that this sealing magic. To bind him completely together with his imagery is called crystal prison. The only downside is. That it takes a while to set up. But any martial artist with mana can't escape, Malin was still. Determined to kill Vincent. Someone please shut this guy up. Thank you. The seal was completed and Malin was trapped in the crystal prison. Herka finally meets Vincent. 
as Vargen has told her a lot about him, Vincent's wound is so severe that he cannot even speak. Kirka acknowledges that. Vincent's mentality is extraordinary. As thanks to him, many people were saved. Then tells Vincent that she and Vargen will take care of it, so he can rest. Vincent loses consciousness. Then we see that he is inside a strange place with mirrors. There is also Julian, who complains. To him for overstretching his body in this way. Kirka goes to see Khan to tell him what has happened. She starts by telling him that it is not a fun thing to hear. There are 15 wounded among the rank 9 cadets. Although no cadets were killed, one of the instructors was killed. Brond. Sizing managed to survive in battle against Malin. Khan tells Herka that they will go out of their way to show respect to Brond and her family. The same for the wounded. He tells Herka not to hesitate to sponsor them generously until they are fully recovered. Herka apologizes as he believes it was his fault. But Khan tells him that there are always many variables associated with those who make contracts with evil spirits. Herka's decision to stop him in one fell swoop after long preparation was not wrong. But how does Malin stay alive after becoming a contractor? As Khan understands it, contractors are provided with enormous strength in exchange for their lives. And once that power is exhausted, the person dies. Kirka mentions that the mages dispatched from the fortress have analyzed it. There is no particular reason why it would have turned out this way, but according to the cadets who participated in the battle, Malin was released from possession after being stabbed by Vincian, and that arm he lost could not be reattached. Khan wonders if Vincian used that strange swordsmanship he used in the assembly of the true swords. Khan decides to take disciplinary action against Malin, since he crossed the boundaries of a martial artist by forming a contract with an evil spirit. He will be confined for the rest of his life, when honestly the best thing would be to kill him. But that's my opinion. Malin's imagery will be completely sealed and his every sinew will be severed so that he can never hold a sword again. A sword again. The next thing is to give Vincian a reward, but he was taken to the main house. After having his wounds treated. Although he still hasn't opened his eyes for a few days. Vincian was in this dimension with Julian, who also doesn't know where they are. They were both. Sent there just after Vincian lost consciousness. But after looking around, Julian comes to the. Conclusion that they are inside Malin's memories. But why are they there? It may be related to that. Random swordsmanship Vincian used. Vincian has no idea what's going on, since that's something. That never happened to him in his past life when he was still Davin. Malin, the contract in the Absolute Sword Slash, how is this all connected? Vincian notices a memory of Malin talking to Vargon, who told him that he, being a son of the Atenka, must go all in. Everything indicated that. There was a reason why Vargon was allowing Malin to go free. Malin began to meditate. They're both. Julian and Vincian realized that they were watching the monoflow of the lightning giant. But something strange starts to happen. Julian disappears and the atmosphere changes completely. Then Vincian meets who used to be his mother in his past life. He was living his memories as. Davin. Teacher Netia, Falcon, Arslan he saw them all walking away. Vincian shouted at them that he. Just wanted to know what happened after his death 500 years ago. Then he is pierced by none other. Then Kajan. Then he sees himself tied up in Sanian's prison. This was his life inside those walls. Things got even weirder. Vincian while tied up saw the little Arslan outside the prison and then. The same as an adult. Which doesn't seem to make much sense. As the last time Vincian saw Arslan. Was when he visited him in prison. He never saw Arslan grown up before. This Arslan tells Vincian. That Arslan is Julian, but Vincian failed to listen properly. So he desperately asks him to repeat what. He said. Arslan tells him to meet again in 500 years no matter what. The atmosphere changes again. Vincian calls out Arslan's name, but by the time he realizes he has woken up, completely confused. By everything he has seen. Julian was worried because Vincian suddenly disappeared. Vincian's body is now healed. But what were those memories? Did the adult Arslan go to see him before he died? Sarayan Wilson were happy that Vincian finally woke up. He thanks them both for caring about him. Herka goes to see Vincian too. She tells Vincian that she reported the incident to Khan. Vargon is better at guarding the fortress than she is, so he does. Kirka mentions that she is. Planning to take care of some things in the central area and return in about three days with Vincian. Next, she wants to ask him for a small favor to have a duel with the young master of the Samian. Family. Kirka wants Vincian to compete in a friendly exchange match. It's an event where. Members of the Samian family and Atenka who are into martial arts compete against each other. It's a big event that both family patriarchs will see. And the friendly exchange match that. Year will be held at the Crimson Fortress, so the current patriarch of the Samian family will be. 
There. Vinchin asks Herka what is the reason he is mentioning all this to him now. This is because. Malone was originally going to participate in the event. But as things happen that way? The only direct descendant of Atenka and closest in age and ability is Vinchin. When he was in. Malone's memories earlier, he saw him and Vargon talking about this friendly exchange match. Vinchin's opponent will be the sixth son of the Samian family, a genius who is expected to become the next patriarch. Everyone, including Malone, didn't think they would win this match. In the first place, apart from the second daughter, Daya, no one has ever won the friendly exchange match before. Vinchin accepts, but clearly doesn't intend to lose. He's going to try to win. Herka tells him to take responsibility for the words he just said. Next, Khan enters the room. Vinchin promises Khan that he will be victorious in the friendly exchange. Match. Vinchin's internal injury is pretty severe for Mona, so both Herka and Khan will leave so he can rest. Now that they mention it, they haven't rewarded Vinchin for all he did before. Khan tells Herka that he will accompany her when they return to the fortress, and they will engrave Vinchin's name on the Crimson Monument. Khan will do it personally. In the fortress, there is a large monument where the names of Atenka's heroes are engraved. Those who have achieved great things have their names engraved on this monument. Kirka acknowledges that Vinchin has done great things, but no one who is rank 9, with the exception of Daya, has been engraved on that monument. Vinchin thinks about the friendly exchange meeting. The will of the Atenka family is to surpass the Samian family. It is a great opportunity to find out about the current level of the Samian family. Vinchin asks Julian about the sixth son of Samian. Julian doesn't know anything, as he didn't expect things with Malone to turn this way. He didn't bother to look into the friendly exchange match. Although, Vinchin has the element of surprise in his favor with absolute sword slash, it won't be impossible to defeat the sixth son. But the odds are still low. Replacing imagery theory, Vinchin will get at most three stars, but his opponent, who has been educated by Samian's elite, will be at least three stars or even higher. Vinchin is sure that the difference in strength will be great. That's why he should start moving his body, even though he has not fully recovered from the internal wound of his mana. His body is healed. He just needs to refrain from using mana. Vinchin begins to train, then Revan appears, reminding him that they are at the place where they first clash swords. Revan heard that Vinchin had been injured. But more importantly, about the favor. Vinchin asked of Revan before he left. Revan managed to find out something about what happened 500 years ago. In fact, he found out something he is not sure about. Revan was curious about his family. No one in that family was distinguished by his strength, except him. The size of the land. And properties are quite common compared to the rest of the collateral descendants. Revan finds it strange that his father, who is not especially extraordinary in the martial arts, or especially wealthy, was able to participate in the assembly of the true swords as a regular spectator all these years after he asked repeatedly. His father gave him an answer. Charles takes Revan to a secret passageway that not even the patriarch of Adenka can enter without his permission. In that place are the hidden archives, the history of Adenka that is unknown to the eyes of the world. Everything about the first Adenka and the stories of light and darkness, everything is there. Charles' family has obtained the high status by keeping those archives for generations. Even after 500 years, if the library were to be open to the public, the ones who would suffer loss would be them. As they are the ones who have run the library as a family business. There was also a record of the Hisley family there. Vincent is glad, as it is possible that there is also a record left to prove his innocence. However, Revan has to inherit his father's position. To show something to Vincent. There is still a long way to go. Vincent asks Revan if he is okay with that, as he has just revealed highly classified information about his family. But for Revan it is nothing. Revan almost forgot something important. A magic crystal. He went to repair his broken sword and Hansen asked him to give that magic crystal to Vinchin. Although Hansen is not sure if that crystal works properly since it hasn't been used for a long time. What Vinchin is seeing is a recorded message. Communication crystals are absurdly expensive. Hansen left the crystal with Vinchin explaining the basic functions, lighting, or simple video. Recordings. But now to the important point, Hansen will tell him what he found out about the dragon. Skeleton. Honestly, it is nothing out of the ordinary. But Hansen realized that you cannot reforge a perfect dragon skeleton sword. Hansen reminds Vinchin of the fire in the smithy. He finally found the cause. When he started to hammer Crimson Lotus after transplanting the dragon skeleton, a flame that could not be contained sparked. The dragon skeleton absorbs the user's mana temperature. Hansen has a blessing called Unwavering Flame from a Great God. Anyway, this means Crimson Lotus could have absorbed that power and caused the explosion. 
It is practically impossible to forge something of that nature safely. Hansen doesn't think he is able to forge a sword. That is better than Crimson Lotus right now unless he uses the dragon skeleton to make a hammer out of it. After Hansen experimented with a small piece of the dragon skeleton, he realized that the power absorbed by the dragon skeleton does not affect other parts of the skeleton. But by doing this, Hansen will have nothing left to use as material to forge Vincent's sword. He is just telling him that to let him know. Even though it is very unlikely. After this, the recording ends. Vincent thinks that if he had more of the dragon skeleton, he could get the perfect sword. Ravan goes back to the smithy. Since he left his sword there, he tells Vincent that if he has anything to tell Hansen to let him know now. Vincent tells him to inform Hansen to forge a hammer using the dragon skeleton as he will try to obtain the additional skeleton and then forge the sword. The two say goodbye. Later, Julian thinks that the information Ravain and Hansen gave Vincent is completely useless. But Vincian clarifies that this is not the case. All possibilities are open. All they have to do is get stronger and get away. And the start of all that will be winning against the sixth son of Samian. Vincian asks Julian to think of a way to defeat the sixth son of Samian. Julian tells him that for now, it is impossible. He could barely defeat Malone when he had not yet been possessed. How does he expect to win against someone so much stronger? Malone's trait was a little hard to handle. Julian tells Vincian that if they were able to get the blessing of the lightning giant, maybe they could win. Vincian thinks it's impossible. But it's not, you saw. The mana flow right. In Malone's memories, even though they saw it, Vincian tells him that they can't activate a trait with just a memory. Julian mentions that this would be the case if they were the memories of a human. But if they were the memories of a god, then it would be possible. That means Julian has memorized the mana flow of the lightning giant's mana. Then get the blessing right now. Julian mentions that the lightning type of mana is the most destructive of all the elements. And the lightning giant is the strongest out of all the lightning gods if they try to get it now. Vincian's body will be destroyed. So before returning to the Crimson Fortress, Vincian must recover as much mana as possible and not use other training methods. From 500 years ago, Julian warns him that if he breaks any of these rules, he will not teach him. The mana flow of the lightning giant. Three days later, in the Crimson Fortress, Vincian is arriving. They are in a carriage and accompanied by many more. Kirka tells Vincian that this is because he will be receiving the engraving ceremony. Everyone is at the memorial, including Rank 1. Representative Cadet Hannah Adenka, the third daughter, as well as Rank 5 Representative Cadet Abel Adenka, the fourth son, and Rank 8 Representative Cadet Damian Adenka, the fifth son. All were there for the ceremony. Malone aside. This is the first time Vincian has seen the other descendants directly. They all look amazing to him, especially the Rank 1 representative girl. Hannah, she even gives Vincian the creeps. Salbora and Sisson are also there. People heard the rumors. That the Patriarch will be responsible for engraving Vincian's name on the monument. And so it is. He is already there. Khan asks Vincian to introduce himself. Vincian did not expect to receive such a great gift. Khan asks for his sword, then he will start the engraving with Vincian's sword. Even though Khan barely put any mana into holding the sword, he pushed everyone back with his power. Vincian's name was finally engraved. Khan tells Vincian to never forget his name. Vincian Adenka. The boys were talking about how great the ceremony was. Salbura enters the room and asks about Vincian. She wanted to throw him a congratulatory party, but she can't find him anywhere. Vincian is in the training camps meditating. Julian gives him instructions. But he can't concentrate and starts crying from happiness for having received that award when he used to be called a good for nothing. He is happy, as Khan finally recognized him as a son. Vincian doesn't care much. He has much more to achieve, so they can't waste time on trivial things. They need to get the blessing of the lightning giant if they want to meet Khan's expectations. So Julian stops crying and they resume meditation. Julian tells Vincian that he must concentrate on forming the perfect triangle after a moment. He manages to form it in a great bolt of lightning. Strikes. The lightning giant had appeared before them. Everything seemed to indicate that they had succeeded. However, Vincian begins to writhe in pain. The lightning energy is completely out of control. The lightning giant starts addressing Vincian. He mentions that there have been people like him from time to time. Julian wonders what happened. The god says he was summoned by activating the blessing, and all he did was give him the blessing as he wished. But Julian doesn't think a human could get that way with just that, as Vincian had restored his body before meditating. The god mentions the skeleton. Vincian's physical body absorbs the mana like cotton wool and receives more power than usual. 
Julian asks him what they should do, as if things continue like this, Vincian will die. The god tells him it is simple. They should just stop the flow of mana. However, if they stop it now, the god will not grant another blessing. Vincian has two choices. Die or live and receive the blessing. Julian thinks that nothing the god says makes sense. He mentions that he was summoned by them. Does it make sense that Vincian has taken more power then? He should? The god tells Julian to know his place. Vincian also doesn't stop the flow of mana, as he knows he won't receive the blessing if he stops. He must control the lightning energy and keep it with his body. That's what he has to do first to fully receive the blessing. Julian cannot stand idle in this situation. Even though his divine energy is weak, he can try to protect Vincian's heart. Julian enveloped Vincian's heart with his divine energy. But it's not enough that power is not at a level Julian can handle. The lightning energy is surging from Vincian's heart. Vincian must hold on a little longer. If his heart explodes, it will be over for both of them. Julian seems to be fading from using too much divine energy. He doesn't want to die, but if he stops using his powers now, it will all end badly. Next, it looks like it's all over for Vincian. Apparently his heart has exploded. Julian desperately cries out for help. Then someone arrives on the scene. The same person who healed Malone, the priest who was sent from the fortress. Julian understands now his voice can reach those who have holy powers. Despite the situation, Vincian has not given up yet. That's why Julian will not give up either. Julian speaks to the priest, who asks him who he is. Julian replies that he is the god known to Vincian. That asks him to heal him, as he is in a bad state. But the priest cannot get close to him because of the lightning. Julian comes up with the idea of blocking the lightning from reaching the priest. So that he can heal Vincian. Julian blocks the lightning energy surrounding Vincian's whole body. Now it's time. With Gaia's light, the priest starts to heal Vincian. Now we go to Sari, who went to see Vargon. Because she wants to learn sorcery, Vargon tells Sari that when he saved her from the rubble on that occasion, he felt a strong mana in her body. Just like Vincian, the mana that covers. Sari's body is beyond the understanding of current magical studies. Vargon warns her that it will not be easy to learn magic, and he has never taught anyone nicely, yet she wants to learn. Vincian keeps growing and is going deep down a path where Sari can't help him. All she can do for now is take care of him when he comes back with injuries. She doesn't want that anymore. She wants to be of more help. What she doesn't know is that right now Vincian is dying. Anyways, Vargon tells Sari that she needs Vincian's permission to train because she is a servant. Suddenly, they realize that something is happening. Vargon and Sari go to the place where they meet Vincian in the priest's shevin. Fortunately, Vincian is safe, and not only that, he has received an opportunity. He got what he wanted. Sari asks Vincian for permission to learn magic. Julian tells Vincian that it's a great opportunity. As Sari would learn magic from a powerful sorcerer, Vincian notices that Julian looks a little faded. Vincian agrees to Sari. Learning magic, then tells Vargon to take good care of her. As Vargon monitored Malone's growth, he notices that Vincian now possesses the giant lightning bolt. He lost sight of it for only a moment and Vincian became even stronger. Vincian begins to think he never had a teacher. So he has not been able to learn some of the swordsmanship that Arslan left for the Attica. Vincian tells Arslan that since the friendly exchange match is coming up, he needs to train hard, so he gets to the point. Whereas the teacher who will take on the role of Training Vincian in the fortress, Vargon doesn't know what Vincian means by this. And replies that Vincian has to get his teacher on his own. The elder of each family promotes the boy who has the potential to be the successor patriarch with a teacher. A martial artist can be a volunteer as well. For collateral descendants, the family elders come directly. Vargon realizes that Vincian does not yet have an elder to promote him. Julian makes it clear that they have no elders on their side. He is ashamed to say, but no one would have been the Promoter of the good for nothing Vincian. Vincian thinks, if there is someone who can help him, there is only one place. Wilson takes a letter from Vincian to Railso, which was originally addressed to the patriarch, but Wilson was afraid to stand in front of him. Railso takes the letter to Khan, upon reading it. Khan tells Railso that Vincian needs a teacher. The letter also said that Vincian had managed to acquire Malone's lightning giant. Khan knows that Vincian Sent the letter there because that's the only place he can ask for help right now, so Khan mentions to Railso that since she trained Vincian before, why doesn't she go as his teacher? She refuses. As she uses the swordsmanship of her ruined family, not the Adden Cup, and if she teaches Vincian too much, he will only pick up bad habits. In that case, what can Khan do to help Vincian? Railso. 
mentions to him that there is someone appropriate, someone who is in fact well known to Khan. A powerful person who uses the swordsmanship of the Aden Cup. Possessor of the Lightning Giant, whom they referred to as the Thunder Giant, Merlin. Whom we already knew. With the Patriarch's authority, Khan can provide him with access to the fortress so that Merlin can become Vincian's master. Khan mentions that in order to do so, Merlin has to want to help, but he need not worry, as Merlin is Railso's friend. She will be able to convince him. Merlin remembers Vincian as he passes the place where Vincian used to train, then Railso approaches him. Merlin immediately assumes that Railso is not there to ask him how he is. Railso offers him a new position within the Yellow Dragon unit. Merlin refuses at first as the word sword is not even included in the unit's name. Railso tells him that there will be someone there who will be happy to teach him, then mentions Vincian. Railso tells him that the elders won't even see him, and he is too young, the chances for him to become the potential patriarch are quite low, and there will be no more sponsors. Merlin refuses. Again, but is surprised to hear that Vincian acquired the blessing of the lightning giant. Now things change. He is interested, but has many reasons not to teach Vincian. Merlin is being kicked out of different places because the elders don't like him, and yet Railso wants him to teach someone who has not been chosen by the elders. Railso proposes a wager. Vincian will soon have a duel against the sixth son of Samian. If he wins, Merlin must become his master. A few days later, Vincian was training. It still wasn't enough. He needs to make the power of the lightning giant completely his own. Vincian uses current boost, but it's not enough to cover the lightning around his blade. He needs to distribute the lightning like Malone did. He needs to increase the output, but it won't be that easy. Julian notices that Vincian is unable to control that power yet. Vincian feels the lightning filling his body, but that makes it much harder to control. Vincian reminds Julian of the reply they received from Railso. Then we see that reply. Railso writes to him that judging by the situation, they will not be able to get a master before they friendly exchange meeting. The reason is because of the rejection of the right person, and the second reason, the influence of the elders. The Council of Elders will not want Vincian to intervene in the succession plan they have formed. This group of elders exists to control the power of the patriarch, so even Khan will not be able to be of much help. Railso adds that she would like to help Vincian in some way, but she cannot abandon her duties for a prolonged period of time. So in the friendly exchange match, Vincian will have to fight with his own strength. He will have to use absolute sword slash as much as possible as well as the other traits. Julian comes up with another method they can use, the Samian swordsmanship. Vincian used to be a Samian, right? Besides, he used this technique in Hanson's smithy before. Vincian can use it, but then he has to handle the consequences. If he uses the Samian swordsmanship in public with experience, the mother will call them again. It is somewhat unfortunate that he is unable to use the swordsmanship from his previous life, there he thinks of something else. He thinks of some skills, will he be able to use them in the current state? From there we go to the main castle of the Samian family, where a person was standing in front of a completely bound tiger. This boy will be Vincian's opponent, as he is informed by this bald man named Julian, the elder of the Samian family. The bald man warns the boy that Vincian has been using strange abilities despite being known as a good for nothing and makes it clear that for the Samian, the friendly exchange matches an event that does more harm than good, because if they win, nothing will change, but if they lose, they will suffer. Complete humiliation. What people want to see in that event is how the underdog stands up and wins. The tiger breaks free from the chains, but the sixth son of Samian manages to cut him down using Kashak's blessing. To let the world know that this story does not exist, Kagan Samian. The sixth son is determined to defeat Vincian. Selbera wants to present Vincian with an enchanted crystal. But upon entering, she encounters a huge blast of power coming from Vincian. His sword had changed. It was now a shade of purple, it was as if he was holding a sword other than the Crimson Lotus. It has been a while since these two have seen each other. Selbera shows the crystal to Vincian. It's not just any crystal, inside that crystal is Kagan's spark, so Vincian accepts it happily. Vincian reproduces what is inside the glass, no matter how many times he looks at it. The technology of that era still fascinates him. Vincian notices something in Kagan's movements, even though the opponent gives up on him. He doesn't stop and continues without mercy, and the facial expression he has from start to finish, Kagan looks exactly like Kagan. That they look similar in appearance. Maybe a coincidence, but the same techniques and movements plus the nasty little habits. Vincian wants to meet Kagan right away. Next, we see several people gathered to welcome the mages gathered for the proceedings of the friendly swap meet. This guy is the mage captain, Alberto. Alberto explains that the event consists of three stages, the treasure hunt to find the treasure. 
of the enchanted dungeon, the subjugation against monsters that have been captured and finally, the spar, which could be called the flowering of the friendly exchange meeting. The mages are responsible for the first level, the treasure hunt, so Albert would like to decide what kind of beasts they will create with magic. Vargon interrupts to speak, taking into account the skills of the two young masters. He was thinking of reptiles or demons level 8. Those kind of monsters should be difficult enough for three-star martial artists. It should be enough for the first level, however. The associates of the sixth magic tower propose giant beasts level 8, Fractor. Vargon is alarmed. To hear this, as giants are difficult even for four or five-star martial artists. This guy adds that it should be since it's been a while since the event has been held. Vargon is angry, as if giants are used, it will only make the sixth son of Samian look good. Things between these two are getting more and more heated, but Albert intervenes to stop them arguing. They will choose things with votes. Those who agree with the giants, raise their hands, surprisingly for Vargon. There are many who agree, now, as they are in the majority, the giants are chosen. All these guys were dogs of the Samian, Alberto included. It's one day before the event starts, Kirka is taking care of the paperwork as best he can. Kirka asks Vargon what happened to the preparations for the first level. But he doesn't even want to talk about it, what they did there was disgusting. Everyone was in favor of the Samian. They assumed that nothing can be done since after all. The sixth magic tower is in Samian territory. Things will be fine as long as Vincent wins in the other levels. Kirka asks Vargen if he really thinks Vincent can win. Kirka recalls that Vargen had said that the odds of the young Adinkum master winning were less than 10%. This win Abel was the candidate. Finally, the day of the event arrived. People were surprised to see Vincent covering Malone's place. Vincent keeps thinking about how much that brat Kagan looks like Kagan and talking about him. He makes an appearance. Kagan introduces himself to Vincent and they shake hands. They look pretty good. People thought Vincent would look inferior. Kagan is acting very friendly. Vincent doesn't notice anything odd about him. However, that smile is very off putting. Kagan wants Vincent to prove himself. Vincent tells Kagan that he expects him to prove his talent to him. Vincent really thinks about winning. Although they are not yet in the arena, the friendly exchange match has already started for both of them. The crowd chant Kagan's name. Herka kicks off the event. The first level is the treasure hunt. The two participants will enter an enchanted space and must search for a chest. However, inside the enchanted space, there will be monsters made by sorcery. A giant fracture will be guarding the chest. The participants will select two cadets of rank. Nine each to accompany them during this level. The last losers of this event. The Adenka will. Choose cadets first. Kirka believes that Vincent will initially select Selbara. But surprisingly, Vincent chooses Sizen and Harmon to accompany him. Both Sizen and Harmon have the lowest scores. Among the rank nine. Kirka asks Vincent if he is sure he chose those two. And he is correct. Kirka hopes he is not using those two as an excuse for when he loses but that is not the case. The reason he chose those two is because he doesn't want to give Kagan any excuse. And the second reason is because those two are quite distant. But they have a Denka family blood. It is important to defeat the Samian with the blood of the patriarch Arslan. Selbera wanted Vincent to choose her. He trusts and respects her. He was even able to defeat Malone because of her. He wishes Selbera luck in the event. But isn't he supposed to not choose her? Well, this is because Vincent is doing it to provoke Kagan and it's working. Kagan's choice is the representative and vice representative. I.e. One of them is Selbera. Vargon knows that at least this level is ready for the Samian. He has no choice but to trust Vincent. Vargon confronts the stupid wizard from before. Then they open the portal to the enchanted dimension to start the event. It is quite dark inside. Sizen suggests Vincent use the magic crystal to be able to see better. As for Kagan, he says he doesn't need a light source and asks both Selbara and the other two. Walk a little further behind him. The spectators were waiting for the moment when the giants appear. For things to get exciting. Vincent and Kagan are very different. One belittles his companions. And the other does not. Harmon asks Vincent if they can really be of any help to him. He tells. Him not to worry as they are both great martial artists who have overcome their fears. After. Saying this, there is an explosion that sends both of them flying. The first giant has appeared. It's too big and it kind of looks like a titan. It looked like Vincent was hit by the giant but. He is right on top of the monster preparing his attack. The plane is for Sizen and Harmon to distract. 
the giant while Vincent searches for the chest. Fracture giants have very poor vision so he will react immediately to the sounds they are making. It is just as Vincent had told them they are both very brave. That said, Vincent goes off to find the chest. Herka and Vargon are alerted as the level is just called a treasure hunt. But the important element is to demonstrate martial arts in the process. Why didn't they tell him earlier? Vincent soon after finds the chest but it is not that easy. Because just before he gets there, he meets another giant. The giant attacks Vincent. Vincent starts to plan a strategy. For the plan to succeed, he needs to save at least one hit of absolute sword slash. But having two giants makes things very difficult. Besides, this giant is much faster than the first. 1. He reacts quickly to frost walk moves. Vargon wonders why the hell there is another giant. This nasty wizard knew about it and says it was a simple mistake. Vargon confronts him as someone. Like that doesn't deserve to carry the name of the sixth magic tower. Herka tells Vargon to stop. As there are many people watching, she understands why he is upset. But nothing will change. The wizard tells Herka that she is very calm. She kindly asks him to stay there once the event is over. Kagan's group is fighting the giant. They manage to cut off an arm. Well, managed. Kagan did shortly after he defeats him and is somewhat disappointed as he was expecting more. Another giant appears behind him. But Kagan uses Samian swordsmanship, gentle steel, and manages to cut the giant while climbing up his arm. There are a lot of Attack on Titan references here. Kagan hits the giant. Selbora has a hard time admitting it, but Kagan is very strong. Despite all he has done to take down the two giants, he still has a lot of techniques up his sleeve. As for Vincent, he continues to fight the giant. Julian is frustrated because nothing goes according to plan. Julian has another plan to use Absolute Sword Slash to defeat both giants at once. But that won't be so easy. They are too big if Vincent aims at once. He can't see the sword path for the other. Vincent thinks and comes up with something. Sizing and Harmon continue to draw the attention of the other giant. But they have nowhere to run. However, Vincent shows up to help them and brought the chest with him. Vincent tells them that the plan will change. Sizing and Harmon still didn't know there were two giants. But now they do. Because they are right in front of each other. The giants prepare to attack. Sizing was very scared. Vincent tells Julian to get ready. The plan is for Julian to become the target of the giants. Just as Vincent expected. Due to the size of the giants, he can't get a sword path for absolute sword slash and finish them both off at once. In that case, he needs to find something that intersects with them. Vincent can feel it. The other half of his soul, Julian's presence, thanks to him, he can see a sword path. Vincent uses absolute sword slash. Chapter 1, Dwarf King and with that, he manages to defeat one of the giants. And then the other, Julian is afraid because he thinks that the blow will hit him. But it is not so. The people watched in amazement as Vincent defeated two giants at once with a single blow. Just as Vincent expected. Even with absolute sword slash, he can't take down a god. That's why Julian is untouched. He complains to Vincent because he didn't know it. From the beginning and still risked. Just now, Vincent was thinking, so he wonders how Julian hurt him. Sizen and the other ask Vincent if there is anyone else there, as they are not able to see Julian, so he has to pretend as if nothing is going on. Vincent saved the last strike of absolute. Sword slash for this, to slash his way through that entire space forged by magic. Vincent without any trouble managed to destroy the magic dungeon. The nasty wizard this one tells his minions to make sure there was no mistake with the spell, but there is no need for that, as Vincent's sword is able to cut through magic. Though Vargon didn't expect Vincent to end up cutting through the entire dungeon. Though he's really impressed with the creative solution he had. Alberto starts babbling. That Vincent should be disqualified for destroying the dungeon. But Herka explains that there is no rule against that, as no one had tried it before Vincent. Herka tells Alberto that for the captain of the Magical Association, who is supposed to be neutral, he looks rather annoyed, as if it's any of his business. Sizen hands the chest to Herka. The wizard says that Vincent hasn't won yet. As the first level is for a show of strength, no matter who finishes first. Kagan has not finished. Yet, so a winner cannot be decided. In the remaining time, if Kagan continues to demonstrate his martial arts, the victory will belong to the Samian. Vincent asks Vargon if the dungeon from before was made with the assembly element. He answers yes, as equal environments must be given to each competitor. Vincent says that he was able to break the dungeon he was in. So the mana that formed that dungeon 
if before the water flowed in two directions. And now that Vincent has forcibly blocked one, the remaining mana will flow in one direction only, making the giant stronger. The giant, now stronger, attacks Kagan. But even though it has become stronger, everything indicated that. The level of intelligence was still the same. With such a simple attack, Kagan is sure to cut. Off the giant's arm, or so he thought. Because even though he tries to cut it off with the technique he used before, it doesn't hurt the giant. Kagan realizes that something must have happened outside, otherwise a monster that was dying a moment ago would not have become stronger. The giant is about to attack Kagan, who won't have time to adjust to take the blow, then Selber draws the giant's attention to distract him. Now they just have to look for the chest. Selber wouldn't be doing this if Vincent hadn't told her to do her best. But things were far from over, because the first giant is also still alive, and is, like the other one, much stronger. Kagan goes bruiser and lashes out at the giants out of frustration that his performance was ruined. He uses the last chapter, Bloody Full Moon, and manages to put both giants through at the same time with a single blow. Kagan was impressive from the start, had he not intentionally left the giants alive in the beginning to continue his performance. This would have been over sooner. Kagan is angry, even though he completed the level and took the chest. Even though Kagan's performance was probably better than Vincent's, it took much longer. Vincent was waiting for him. Outside with a smile, and asks him if he enjoyed the gift he left him. Kagan can't believe that. Vincent finished before him, and he doesn't know what gift he is referring to either. Vincent explains that he has a friend who was quite good at sorcery, and thanks to him he was able to overflow. The mana in the dungeon Kagan was it. Vincent's plan was to make Kagan look like an idiot from the beginning of that level, but he calms down and accepts his defeat. However, he makes it clear to Vincent that it will be different from now on, as he has now started to see him as a true friend. Yeah, sure. Herka says that if they decide who is victorious, then why do they have a jury? Anyway, the victory goes to Vincent anyway. The next level will be held in three days. Salbera is reassured that Vincent won, then she runs into Kagan, who tells her that he didn't get a chance to thank her. Kagan tries to shake Salbera's hand, but she has a strong feeling that it's a bad idea to touch his hand. But in the end she accepts and Kagan says goodbye. Did he really go there to thank Salbara? It doesn't look like it. Because with an unhinged look on his face, Kagan says goodbye to Selbara. From there we go to Sari, who isn't her training meditating, managing to summon several animals around her, then Wilson arrives, who brings her food and clothes. Sari asks Wilson how Vinson did in the competition. Wilson replies that she clearly managed to win. Wilson asks Sari if it is not difficult to train there. She says yes, but clarifies that when she is in the fortress, she cannot concentrate because she is distracted by Vinson. Besides, Vargen told Sari that it would be better for her to train there, as it would be easier for her to communicate with the spirits of the snowy mountain. Sari needs to find a spirit to form a contract. With soon. At Sari's level, she can only handle one, but she would like to have many. Moments later. Sari hears someone calling for help. Wilson didn't hear anyone, but she continues to hear. Someone's voice calling for help. Meanwhile, Selbara and the rest of the cadets were celebrating. Vincent's victory. Vincent tells Selbara that she has only got one point, there is still competition. Left. Vincent tells Selbara that she was a crucial factor in his victory, because he knew she could play an important role in helping Kagan. Kagan and Vincent may have similar levels, but Selbara played a vital role in Kagan's victory, so at the end of the day, Vincent would have everything going for him. Selbara is ready to help Vincent in whatever he needs. They both bump fists to reaffirm their mutual trust. But while doing so, Vincent notices something. He wonders when and how Selbera misunderstands. And thinks it's something romantic, but Selbera has on her arm the Samian's chain seal. Vincent quickly asks Selbera if something happened with the Samian, physical contact or similar. That's when she remembers that Kagan shook her hand before with thank you intentions. Yes sure. The chain seal is more of a curse, it is a skill that gradually suffocates the opponent's mana and slowly brings him to his death. Vincent can't believe that Kagan has fallen. Solo. Julian asks Vincent if he knows how to undo the curse, but for that, they first have to determine what type of chain seal it is, depending on the seal, the method of undoing it is different. Vincent tells Selbera to train together every day at dawn. She still doesn't understand what is going on and thinks it is something romantic. The next morning, Vincent waits for Selbera to train. He mentions that if Kagan placed a curse on her, it's because he's sure that no one will notice. Because no one knows about the chain seal. Maybe that technique has been erased from history. Just like Absolute Sword Slash or the Magic Body. Julian tells Vincent that it's best to keep that between them for now, including Selbera. Vincent won't forgive Kagan. That idiot used magic on someone who is irrelevant to the competition. 
Moments later, Selvara arrives for training. Albeit a little late, and is dressed as if she is on a date. Vincent asks her why she is dressed. Like that for training. Seeing that the foolish Vincent doesn't notice, Julian tells her that she likes him, but he considers her too young. He was 29 years old 500 years ago. The two hold hands. To circulate the mana, Vincent tells her that if she senses anything strange, she should let him know immediately. Although Selbera's mana flow is unusual, she doesn't realize what is happening. It must be because martial artists have lost too much since the days when imagery was first used. Vincent realizes that she can't undo the seal. It's stronger than she thought. They need an offering to undo the seal, the heart of an animal. Spirit or human. Probably Kagan. Has sealed the offering somewhere in the snowy mountain. Only if they manage to find the offering. And release it, the seal will be undone. If they can't, Selbera will die in three days. Julian may. Sound heartless, but the priority for him is the friendly exchange match. In three days the second. Round starts. They can't not prepare for it. Vincent hopes Julian realizes what is more important. Those who pursue only targets will lose their people. Vincent would have had the comrades he lost to the Samian. He wouldn't have spent the rest of his life in prison. The training between these two ends for now. Vincent knows about the seal because he experienced something similar. Before when he was locked up and his mana was sealed. He heard that they used the heart of a prisoner who would serve a death sentence at that time. Julian asks Vincent about the crime he committed. That led to his imprisonment. Selbara faints so they take her to the treatment room where she just has to rest. It's the first time the priest sees so many symptoms at once. He tells Vincent that the best thing to do is to send Selbara to Gaia's temple in the capital. But will they be able to undo the seal there? It's an ability that was erased from history. Vincent doesn't think it's possible to help her there. Besides, the seal's progress is very fast and it's likely that if they take Selbara to the capital, she won't even last the whole trip. Vincent tells Shevin to take good care of Selbara. There is only one thing Vincent can do. Find the sacrifice that was used for the chain seal on that huge snowy mountain. Vincent will not lose another person to a Samian. Using dirty tricks again. We return to Seri who continues to hear cries for help. It sounds like the voice of a spirit, but far away. Then she feels chills and moments later, she realizes that Vincent is there too. Vincent asks Seri what she is doing there. Vincent explains the whole situation to Seri and that he is in search of what was used as a sacrifice for the seal. It is likely that whatever was used for the sacrifice is something small, a small creature or a spirit. Seri believes she can be of help. The seal continues to advance on Selbera's body. Vincent charges Seri to move faster through the mountains. Seri tells him she can hear something between that canyon. They descend in search of the cries for help, which may be related to the seal placed on Selbera. Vincent is not that he doesn't believe Seri, but he knows Selbera doesn't have much time. So he thinks it's a waste of time to look for a spirit there. Vincent tells Seri that they don't have much time, so if the spirit is around, he will destroy the whole region to break the chain. Seal. However, he realizes that Seri found something. It was the spirit, and it has the same chains as Selbera. Seri asks Vincent if there is any way to help the spirit, but Vincent says no. Since the spirit became the sacrifice to the chain seal, it would be best to kill it peacefully. However, Seri tells him that there is another way. Seri begins to conjure a spell. She is trying to make a contract with the spirit. If she succeeds in forming a contract with the spirit, then the contract will be over the chain seal. Moments later, the chains are broken and the curse is undone. It looked like it was all over there, but suddenly they are attacked. Vincent moves quickly to defend Seri. The person attacking them is none other than Kagan, who is angry that Vincent broke the curse, but more angry is Vincent. Kagan tells Vincent that because of what he did, he caused a huge diplomatic dispute against the Samian. Kagan tells them that he will let them go if they leave the spirit there and leave. Vincent reproaches Kagan for the fact that he tried to kill Selbara. Kagan feels superior to Selbara and because he felt that she tried to ruin his plans. He wanted to kill her. Kagan tells Vincent that as they are both of the same class, then he should understand his actions. Vincent points his sword at Kagan and tells him that his People haven't changed at all for 500 years. Kagan likes Vincent's eyes, but it is because of those eyes that he doesn't think they can become good friends. In the friendly exchange meeting, they will decide who is right in the end. Selbera is released from the curse and opens her eyes. Then Vincent enters desperate to see her and asks Selbera to show him her hand. Sure enough, the chain seal has completely vanished. She is now safe. 
Shevin reminds Vincent that there are only two days left before the second round. So he tells him that he must prepare himself. During the second level, they will face a real monster, the battle of subjugation. Meanwhile, in the main castle Atenka, the newspapers were talking about Vincent's feat of winning the first round of the event. One of the four great elders of Atenka, Iagel, refuses to believe it. Actually, none of the four great elders could believe it. Neither Fadionel nor Delbeck. They are angry because for the last 25 years, they have not been able to do their own thing. Because Kagan Atenka is the patriarch in all that. Time. Kagan has been someone who constantly expresses his displeasure to the elders since he was young. Fadionel mentions that this is precisely why they are sponsoring the first son and second daughter as successors. The first son, Carmen, has great ambition, while the second daughter, DEA, has no interest in anything but martial arts. The elders' plan is to have one of these two as the next patriarch to rule the Atenka by using them as puppets. That's when they come up with something that goes against everything they are planning. What if Vincent wins against the Samian? The elders already know that Vincent's name was engraved on the monument by Kagan and that he uses Crimson Lotus, the sword that Kagan used to use when he was a child. Delbeck mentions that right now Kagan is using Vincent to point his sword at the elders. So they decide that they can't allow Vincent to keep making achievements. But how will they do that? Then the last of the four elders, Tilevan Atenka, enters the scene and proposes to send a letter to the Samian, the content of which is as follows. The Atenka will not consider the lawlessness of the Samian during the first level of problem. However, on the second level, they will proceed under the direction of the Atenka. Two days later, the second level of the event began, the battle of subjugation. There is only one rule. Pulverize the monster in front of you in the shortest time possible. The monster they will face is a lizard man. They are known for forging large spears from animal. Skeletons. The lizard man attacks Kagan and gave the impression that he had disappeared. But he was upstairs preparing to counterattack. In one attack, he manages to cut the lizard man. In two, all this in just under 15 seconds. It is a new record. Even Beatea, she had taken 20 seconds to finish off the lizard man. The crowd was impressed with Kagan's performance. He then threatens Vincent and tells him that the next thing he will stab is him. Julian asks Vincent how he plans to break the record. Vincent asks him to calm down, as there is no way they will lose when it comes to speed. Vincent prepares for the fight. He is ready to fight. The second level for they. Atenka begins. However, Vincent notices that that lizard man is in a strange state. This is the work of Till Evan Atenka. Although at first he denies that he has done nothing to the monster that Vincent will face. He did not use any special magic or trick and captured a similar lizard man that Kagan would face. But what happens is this, that lizard man that Vincent would face has not been fed in two days, till Evan knows that a normal martial artist would not notice. But a starving lizard man is dangerous. Dangerous enough that he cannot be defeated in a matter of seconds. Vincent already knows that the monster is hungry. The monster is released and the fight begins. Vincent should start dodging. But if he does, he won't be able to break Kagan's record. So if that's the case, Vincent will have to improvise. Everyone was surprised to see that. Vincent wasn't planning to dodge the attack, surprisingly. He lets himself be pierced with a lizardman's spear. But thanks to that, he can shorten the time in which he will defeat it. If he is pierced like that, Vincent should just let out his lightning. Vincent uses the lightning. Giant's blessing trait, causing a huge explosion that even scares Vargon. Who wants to call the priests of the fortress? But Herka asks him to calm down. Ironically, Herka thinks that Vincent was possessed by a spirit that died before defeating the Samian. How ironic. Isn't it? This girl. Reads the manhwa. Surprisingly, in just five seconds, Vincent manages to defeat the lizard man. Breaking. Kagan's record, Shivan runs to help him as it is a serious wound. They must take out the spear first. After that, they will heal him simultaneously. Kagan is angry after seeing the barbaric method. Used by Vincent. To make him more annoyed, Vincent looks at him and smiles. This concludes the second. Level. The third level will be in three days. This mysterious woman wonders if Vincent is Sarvana's son. She can't wait to meet him. Shivan wanted to enter the Crimson Fortress because he had heard. It was an easy job. And it was, but before Vincent signed up. Thanks to Shivan, Vincent's wound was healed. UT to defend himself from the attacks. The clash of both swords caused a big explosion. Vincent knows that the Crimson Emperors might his weak in long battles. So if he controls the timing while well, he could achieve something. But Kagan refused to leave. Any opening. Then he uses New Moon Slash, breaking a big part of the arena. Kagan was completely freaked out. 
He thought the battle was over, but it had just begun. Vincent used Amaloon's swords. Unship. Quick greatsword defense. We see a flashback where Kagan was doing his thing. Treating people as he pleased, Davin was just watching. Next, we meet this guy. Amaloon. Although. He prefers to be called Falcon, he is a member of Samian's gladiators. Well, was. Davin met him. In the fighting arena. They were among the gladiators who would make Kagan shine. Falcon knew that. Vincent's dream was to defeat Kagan, but he didn't think it was a foolish dream. In fact, he was confident that he would achieve it. Falcon was a great friend of Davin's. He supported him to the end without ignoring his dream. But he became too strong, too fast, and became a target of Samian's Council of Elders, who set him up and killed him. But he left behind his swordsmanship. And it is the one Vincent uses right now. It is an ability that is the complete opposite of the Samian's abilities. Plus, it uses very little mana. Kagan is surprised to see this swordsmanship. Vincent tells him that this skill belongs to someone who was sacrificed by the Samian. Upon hearing this, Kagan assumes that it is a useless skill and prepares to attack. Kagan uses another of his techniques and moves quickly in front of Vincent. It is a great power. Vincent feels that he is fighting against the adult Kagan. Kagan wants to finish the fight quickly. Then disappears, then reappears. But Vincent knew which direction to dodge. This because he knew he would land on his right foot first. Now he knows he will jump in the air to dodge. Vincent reads it like a book because of Kagan's arrogant personality. Vincent strikes back. Now it is very clear to him. Kagan uses exactly the same strategies as Kagan. It would mean that he is incredibly powerful. But this has a different meaning for Vincent. Because nobody else in the world knows Kagan's swordsmanship as well as he does. Kagan was a genius. He could control any situation with his strength. But if something unexpected that he couldn't control happened, he would completely lose his common sense. Kagan resembles Kagan even in his shortcomings. Vincent prepares his attack. Amaloon Swordsmanship. Chapter 1. Then the two clash swords and surprisingly, Kagan's sword slashes. The crowd goes wild. Vincent is thankful that it's over quickly. As the absolute sword slash isn't the only skill that affects his heart. However, Kagan won't give. Up. Vincent notices that his mana concentration has become stronger. Kagan has a trick up his sleeve. Sword God Kashak's blessing trait. Both Khan and even Valkia were surprised at what was happening, she didn't even know that her son possessed this trait. The Sword God Kashak's blessing. Bestows an incredible talent of swordsmanship on those who possess it. But when it reaches its peak, it gains another trait. And the power of that trait turns the sword into another element of imagery. Kagan is at the peak of his four-star limit. Vincent does not recognize this trait. It is dangerous for Kagan. As he spent most of his strength using the Crimson Emperor's might, it is dangerous for him to use another greater power simultaneously. But Kagan does not care. That Vincent cares about him. Without words, Kagan attacks Vincent, who barely manages to block the blow. The clash of swords was so strong that even the spectators felt all the pressure in the air. Amaloon's sword breaks. Kagan remembers the smile with which Vincent looked at him in the second stage. And his Vincent risked everything in the second stage. He will also risk everything in this one. Even if his body is broken by Kashek's strength. He is determined to defeat Vincent. This guy is definitely like Kagan. Vincent refuses to be defeated, so he will also put his life on. The line. They both fight with all their might. Amaloon's sword is completely broken. But Vincent. Still has a chance. Then he swings his fist at Kagan and knocks him back. Both have reached the limit. Vincent will bet everything on the next attack. Kagan uses Scarlet Song final chapter. On the other hand, Vincent was preparing to use Absolute Sword Slash, alternate form. Both attack. Vincent's Absolute Sword Slash is combined with the power of the Lightning Giant. So it will cut through the target and explode. Kagan loses his vision for a few moments. By the time he realizes, he has Vincent right in front of him preparing to attack. Vincent's blow has incapacitated Kagan, which means, yes, the winner of the third level is Vincent Adenka. Victory goes to the Adenka. Several years have passed, all chanting Vincent's name. Just like 500 years ago. Vincent did it again. Vincent's victory is no laughing matter for the Adenka elders. Railso was also there watching Vincent's victory. The good guy grew up for nothing. Don't you think? Berlin has lost the bet, so he will have to be Vincent's teacher from now on. Next, we see two people who are also watching the event, one of them. Raven asks the other. Called Sirkin, if she would be able to defeat Kagan or Vincent. 
This girl belongs to the renowned family of spearmanship, which is equivalent to the Adenka and Samian families. Raven is a descendant of the Vardikans. Raven is eager to confront Vincent, so she comes up with an idea. As Vincent will be in the fortress every day since he is a cadet, so she will contact her father to enroll in the Crimson Fortress as well. And that's how the efforts part of this man wins. Hey everyone! If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, leave a comment below asking for part 2. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and give the video a thumbs up. Most importantly, leave a comment to let me know what you think. See you in the next video.